So we have questions today. Anonymous yeah, asks questions. Bird, is it difficult being so goddamn hot? <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, the answer to that is sometimes. 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 Um, you know, I mean, it has its perks. It really does. Like, uh, you know, but then there's also, there's also like all the stories I've been telling lately of the creepy girls in my life. And, <laughs> you know, it comes with the territory. Mm-hmm. It was just like, just kind of thinking back, we were playing Scrap Mechanic yesterday and I just told a story that I still have trouble believing, which was like my, one of my best friends from high school his girlfriend wanted to like cheat uh, on him with me so bad, and this was like uh, a two-year thing. She just would not let up about it. So, I mean, and he was he aware of the this? territory? Uh, I don't know. Probably he never once brought it up because I. If they were aware, then I'd be really concerned about how it was going on for so long. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they were in an awful relationship anyway. They were in an awful relationship, so... You don't say. Yeah, <laughs> really. <laughs> I didn't pick um, up on that from any of the earlier clues. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, All right. Another question yeah, for so, Bird. I mean, if Oh No Necromancer painful. was part of a double bill, what would you name the other show? Oh, I see. So I had two one acts. Uh, so it would be Oh No Necromancer, <laughs> and then usually, usually when you do things uh, like that, the other bill... I, I feel like related, it should be yes, yes, please, Vikings. It's related, but it also has to be a foil. <laughs> it has to be, yeah, it has to be dramatically like different enough. So something like yes, please, Vikings is actually like I, I, that's a kind of a believable one, or um, it, but it, but it wouldn't be like so like obviously named. It'd be something like the Viking came home for dinner or something like that. <laughs> so that's that's what I'd go with. The Viking came home for dinner. Oh, Grandma man. got run over by a Viking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there you go. That's a that's 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 great. That, that's <laughs> well, it's man. What, this Odo um, oh Necromancer thing has gotten some serious <laughs> meme legs. Okay, they want, so, they want so we just right. won't die. Shall we yeah. dive immediately into that now? Seeing as into what? See, well, the remix that. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Somebody uh, sent in. Somebody scraped yeah. the audio of Bird saying "Oh No Necromancer" and then turned oh, it into a song. Really? Uh -huh. yep. Was yeah. Was it made into like a? It's yep. like made like a shmoyo thing. Yeah. Or almost? Orange Immortal made a "Oh No Necromancer" remix. Yes, <laughs> yep. Okay, let's. Are we listening? It to was it? made with my blessing. He we asked for my be. permission, and I so said what, yes, thinking that why it would don't never we do, actually materialize. Why don't we do a three to one play just so everybody's on the same yeah, page does at the same time? I got it up. All right. I have it up. Yep. All right, three, two, one, go. <laughs> I love that. It's got like part. a dub feel to oh, it. Oh no, necromancer! Oh no, necromancer! Oh no, necromancer! Oh no, necromancer! <laughs> <laughs> Oh no, basically went like, oh no, necromancer, oh no, necromancer. <laughs> I'm pretty down with this remix. <laughs> we just need to figure out how to add the OC remix now. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh, display this oh, fine man. scrap mechanic. This, yeah, oh, this shows man. up at a random in the playlist. That would yeah. be great. I mean, oh jeez. <laughs> at the very, very, very beginning, I thought I was listening to one of those automatically generated beats that like a Casio would do. A little bit. It kind of had like like a very Jama Jamaican kind of dub feel to it. I didn't realize yeah. it'd become like a dub uh, type playing. of thing. Yeah, it starts playing. Oh, yeah. I'm sure we get like, uh, like music that isn't just me. Yeah, his actual music, which <laughs> sounds decent, but uh, mm -hmm. it's not Ono. Ne it's not Ono Necromancer, therefore no interest. I think I think if the vocals <laughs> will a little bit clearer, 
and more melodic, then maybe it would work better. But I, if there I think was more than do one two seconds, if there was more than one line. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you've done it, Bird. You've True. become this podcast's first meme. <laughs> hey, <laughs> well, a dubious right honor it. indeed. I don't know. Wasn't Shmoo the first meme that like kind of we swept under the rug really fast? I, I don't know if it can goal. be a meme if now, literally nobody picks kind of up thing. on it besides us. We picked up on it That's so just, hard. But we did it to ourselves. We, yeah, I was going to say, we didn't actually share the meme with That's anybody. That's just an inside no. joke of us laughing That's about a good sound. Point. There is a difference <laughs> yeah. between an in-joke and a meme. And we're also just ripping the joke directly from uh, from South Park. South Park, yeah. <laughs> well, you guys were. I was... Well, that's because you don't know anything, so you just you, you uh, suck it up like, a, like an empty culture sponge. <laughs> bird lore was the first meme. Uh, that I mean, bird lore wasn't born in this podcast, but bird lore is perhaps actually the oldest meme uh, born <laughs> of this group. group. Yeah. yeah, probably, yeah. Yeah. It's also still probably my favorite meme. I like bird lore a lot. It kind of right, stopped. Let's, let, let's do more of a genuine question next. Uh, okay. Anonymous okay. asks, do you play tabletop RPGs, and if yes, would you consider recording actual play sessions? Oh, We've been you mean the game? Uh, we, we tried it. <laughs> um, I, think I, I think I just was recording them. Bird was streaming it. Um, but we did actually try doing some tabletop stuff for at least a little while. Did you guys try, like, Settlers of Catan or anything along those lines? Um, no. That's not a well, tabletop okay. RPG, that's just a board game. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's just a board yeah, game. Yeah, so they're talking about D&D, uh, oh, Call of RPG, Cthulhu, Shadowrun. RPG, not just tabletop yeah. games. Yeah. Because yeah. you, were, you were looking at tabletop games. Yeah, I, I, I yeah. bought a, yeah, yeah. a couple of tabletop sim yeah. Tabletop uh, DLCs. RPGs are actually way more filmable than tabletop games because of how little of it is visual. Yes. Because tabletop yeah. games are unfilmable. Like yes. you don't realize it till you try to point a camera at one because I've done this before on our on our tabletop <laughs> sessions. Oh, no. Well, like, so much of a tabletop game is so grounded entirely brown. in your imagination. <laughs> anyway, yeah, like normal so, like, houses are so dim though, and like brown right. and like mm. unfilmable that like you tr you cannot point cameras that normal people own at tabletop games and see any of it and have it show up on a camera. Like it's terrible. It's, like, I'm surprised. So, like, that no one's tried modeling out, you know, the pieces on the board and... Oh, uh, they have. Else. Actually, there are a yeah, couple yeah. of uh, okay. things on the Tabletop Sim Workshop that are just straight up, like, D&D assets. Well, I thought yeah. they had Risk yeah. and other things. Yeah, that, oh, yeah, that's, why, the, that's why the Tabletop that Simulator is so appealing is because we suddenly have an option to film, like, 3D yeah. rendered, yeah. fully lit, like... Because we did... Re recreations uh, of Tabletop games. We did we did stuff with uh, Roll20.net, but it looked like right. ass. Well, yeah. and having eh. something to manipulate in tabletop sim might actually be what we need, because yeah. that's that's why I've always shied away from it, because there's no easy way to turn it into something watchable. Well, I mean, at least Bird, Bird, weren't you streaming our D and D sessions? Or I was, yeah. and uh, I had to resort to uh, drawing fan art the whole time because right. like <laughs> watching Roll Twenty itself was uh, hella like, boring. Almost, it was incredibly boring but, for my audience. Why so I that's why I just MS painted art everything. I think a lot yeah. of people basically treat uh, tabletop stuff, though, as uh, RPGs as being like podcasts. To yeah, the point where like I've actually found side. a fair number of actual podcasts that are that are D and D campaigns on, oh, on yeah, iTunes there and stuff. Because there's no reason to show stuff. Yep, there's a ton of them out there, but a lot of the ones that have higher production value have small animated segments edited into oh, it. Yeah. And, yeah, but uh, you gotta pay somebody to make those. Because those are massive <laughs> media companies <laughs> most yeah, of the time. Yeah. Shell, Even like those small animation is really expensive. <laughs> Shell to put actually really we're wants no, we're to... We're no Will Wheaton and we're no Harmon. Yeah, <laughs> Shell really. actually really wants to try that. Try your hand at that sort of thing. But it would probably be more like Japanese RPG style where you have the people discussing with one another on the sides. And then maybe you have a couple of animations specifically for character attacks. Or casting mm. spells, but I wonder if it almost. I, I wonder if that'd be a viable way of handling visual components to a to a D and D session. Would be to program like a like a visual novel type t type game where you can enter Precisely. all the text and the static images and everything, and, and have battle, that animate. That could battle, work. Yeah, yeah, that'd be an interesting if, way to do it. And if battle was done in a uh, like Final Fantasy turn based kind of manner, where character sprites have specific attacks programmed into them too. Mm -hmm. Like also like Pokemon and such, then yeah, the only thing that you would have to worry about would be maneuvering around a field of play. 
But mm-hmm. so long as you do have that grid built in and some manner of doing it, I mean, yeah, then you could figure out the range for your spells and attacks and such. It'd be quite the endeavor. That would be a, a good thing to work on someday. someday. That's a scary Maybe. amount of work. Yeah. yeah How did we get an entire console it, generation I, of Wii U with no t- no proper D and D style game? It's dumb. <laughs> it's the whole point of having asynchronous multiplayer. It's not going like to make the, money. That's the or problem. Or asymmetrical multiplayer. Well, yeah, that's why nothing was made on the Wii U. <laughs> that isn't <laughs> Nintendo. <laughs> uh, There's a reason why Zombie U awkwardly came out as Zombie on everything else <laughs> a few years later. <laughs> like we need to make up our money that yeah. we didn't get back on this thing. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I used to have though, a, a weekly. Good Wii U games. I used to have a weekly role playing mm-hmm. session with uh, that I'd actually commute to, and all my friends would meet up, and we'd play we'd yeah. play D and D campaigns and stuff. And it always kind of petered out because it's hard to, to be consistent about that stuff. So uh-huh. we played three of my friends. We, we like away. started and didn't quite finish like four different campaigns, and we also dabbled with Vampire the Masquerade and Shadow. I played one session of Vampire the Rat Masquerade, and that. That game's rule set is very broken. Yeah. I think I think Wander's brother recently told us that he was actually partaking in a uh, Star, Star Wars, Wars. Yep. Uh, campaign. Yeah. Like Empire, Star Wars Empire was it? Except they were, they had it set between episodes three and four, so like they were actually. Oh. Well, that's that's what the uh, that's what the campaign setting actually does because oh, it's got really? the most yeah it's got I the most it was metal around four and six. No, th- three. It's definitely three and five. Oh, okay. Kind What's of Star Wars? It's loose. Come on, bird. Not during the podcast. <laughs> okay. Do it harder, bird. You can do that okay. during scrap mechanic. <laughs> oh, so you? Yeah, I, I assume it's because you have a face cam up and you don't want people to see your look of disgust. <laughs> there was there was a look of disgust. In fact. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no, I'd, that I'd, makes be, sense. I'd be up um, for doing to... uh, an entire tabletop RPG session thing, even if it was just a bunch of face cams and talking and no visual component. Like, I'd yeah, even be fine well, with that. I'd, I'd, like, just to hard to I'd like to do that if we were, like, actually in the same room together. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, hard, the hard things, of course, are getting a group together and also having a DM that knows what they're doing. I can't do it. So I haven't I, even I properly admit, finished campaign so far. <laughs> I, I will I've admit, Keith, I specifically am kind of uh, predisposed against having you part of any, because every time I hear about you playing a tabletop RPG, you sound like the worst person having a party. Hey, what do you mean? What has he <laughs> actually done? You want to explain, Yeah, what it, has Keith? he done? Yeah. yeah, I actually don't know what you're referring to. You were talking about how you always played uh, played your characters specifically like anti party, and you'd like walk away and like go off <laughs> on your own and be completely useless and stuff. Useless uh, is not accurate. It's just well, that I would okay. I would pay attention to the fact on a regular basis that individual members of a of a party in an RPG are actually individuals and can do things on their own if they want to. Mm-hmm. Uh, because I I didn't like how everyone else treated par- the party like it was a Final Fantasy party and you have to like literally be locked to each other and you can't wander off. And okay, you can't so that's have, be that's a little bit more okay, but like, like I've I would done... explore dungeons on my own sometimes and just be like, I'm going here now because I think there might be treasure there, and if so, I find it on my own, uh, it's just I, mine. I, we came so to the reason decisions okay. as a group. Yeah, so the reason why I dislike that uh, specifically is because I DM'd for years uh, yeah. in middle school and high school and stuff, and players that did exactly what you just described were players that I would kill off and not talk to because they were too much of a pain in the ass. Uh, I had one guy specifically <laughs> that did exactly what you would do. He's like, you know, power to the individual, and he was a rogue with, like, an absurdly high, like, um, height and si- silently. Like, he was impossible <laughs> to spot for the most part. And I was trying to keep relatively fair here. Uh, so, like, he could stealth through an entire dungeon. He wouldn't fight anything. He'd just, like, sneak through and grab all the treasure before anybody else could. I think the and one whatever. issue with that is and you'd have to make a separate campaign. Yeah, for pretty much. I had to run two campaigns, one for this one guy and one for uh, everybody else. Mm-hmm. And, like, in a video game set- setting, it works perfectly because you have, I mean, the entire thing's pre-programmed, so you don't have to have, like, one singular person. But, like... Then you run into issues of someone having completed quests before other people. And then yeah. Going, no! Yeah, whereas um, eventually I just had this character, his character get trapped in a room that required two people to get out of. Oh, um, no. And, like, it was already in the design. Uh, uh-huh. It required, like, two or three people to actually, like, you know, figure it out. And his character ends up drowning to death. And he was, like, super pissy. I mean, I'm like, look, stick with the goddamn party. 
Yeah, it's for me, what happened simple. was that uh, we were in a dungeon in some forest or jungle or something. I think it was like a, I think it was supposed to be like a pyramid, like Mayan temples or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, the mm-hmm. whole party was stuck trying to solve a puzzle, and I just wandered down an unexplored. Uh, I, I instead wandered down an unexplored corridor, found a half open like door. super-sized door, and mm-hmm. uh, I I started sneaking through it to take a look inside and to see if I can find any riches for myself that I could hide from the party. <laughs> and there was a giant scorpion inside that had clearly been raised inside the chamber that could not physically escape it. And uh-huh. uh, let's see, it uh, there was like some sort of really weird, like it was fun because all the individual circumstances of the dice rolls led to telling a story where uh, I would sneak in successfully, but then spot it, and then I'm like, well, deuces, like immediately trying to leave. Uh, mm-hmm. And right as I'm in the process of leaving, I critically fail my check. And uh-huh. then the scorpion immediately wakes up and grabs me, uh, grapples me, but it's like it's doing it by reaching its claw through the door because I was already escaping out the door. So it's, mm-hmm. I'm outside where it can't reach me except for the one claw. It grapples me and is like crushing me down to like to where, the point where I hit negative uh, hit points. Oh no! Uh, and mm-hmm. then it critically fails its grapple check. Oh, God. It drops me. That's nice. <laughs> and then I'm just yeah, so unconscious the fl- on the floor. <laughs> yeah, that's, it's, it's that's a little bit better than you originally stories, presented but like, it. <laughs> yeah. But, like, the problem is, like, if you, like, film that, like, it's all happening in your head. And you're just like, ah, this is so cool. And people are watching. Yeah. And just like, yeah. Eh. Which is why I mean, you need I, well, that's, that's, I, I would say that's a thing you of demographics. Dates, where that's, yeah. a, that's a matter of people who shouldn't be watching that kind of content, watching that kind of content. Yeah. Which is a problem with streaming, oh. which you guys always have to run into, is that you have to try to appeal your, to your entire audience. But if you're just making yeah. videos, then the people that want it, want it. And the people that don't want it are usually smart enough to move, to move yeah, on that and is realize what it is. True. Yeah. That has been a consistent problem that I've eventually just kind of come to terms with. Yeah. That, like, I can't please everybody, so I'm just going to play what I want. And like, so, there's, yeah, there's people does come who down to are us up doing for a D&D listening campaign. to a campaign and people who are definitely not. And you can only really make stuff for one of them. Mm-hmm. But yeah, the, the, I think the one that uh, Wander was reacting, responding to was uh, there was a there was a yeah there was a a city was in chaos, and mm-hmm. our DM did not at all successfully set up the premise at all. Oh, so he that just sounds pl- good. So we were in a city and stuff was happening to it. I don't remember the exact thing. I think it was like a zombie outbreak or something like that that was supposed to push us together, but he didn't think it through at all and did not at all make any reason for us to go together so what i did is all i did was role play my character in first person of like oh well what would they do in these situations and what they, what, he, what he was doing kept not taking him any closer to all the other characters who he had never met and were in other parts of the city so it was really mm-hmm. the dm's fault for not coming up with any reason for us to be in a room together which to, uh, to oh, some extent you'd almost expect us just to get spawned in one room together or like mm-hmm. start the story with one individual character and then slowly introduce the other characters like oh you walk into this bar this other character's there that's you by the way like that kind of stuff no that <laughs> uh-huh. started a campaign with us all in the same inn or tavern and yeah then it, half, as, half it was a completely left. fresh group so i was just trying yeah. to keep it basic and so i think, then I think that's what Wander was kidnapped. talking about what about yeah. me being a troublemaker because i just kept wandering away and not starting the campaign yeah. but it's so because like, i was role-playing <laughs> so like i i can understand the value of role-playing but like one of the characters you when also I was DMing, work with the uh, yeah. dm sometimes Cause the, yeah because specifically like how many people were in that campaign uh yeah. that you were playing uh, four it's not so bad. I think I had like five or six. But one of the players right out was like, my character hates magic and wizards and anybody they would be associated with. <laughs> and also like tangentially rather racist. And it was one of those where it's like suddenly I went from having like kind of an okay or like newbie party to work with uh, to one character specifically oh. is like antagonistic towards not only me as a DM, but like all the other characters. And so immediately uh-huh. as soon as I start like trying to narrate what happens, uh, she was like, uh, my character leaves, and then oh. soon after, one of the other characters does that too. And like before, I can even like come up That's with a the reason for why they're there. How the hell you deal with like a chaotic evil party or but something? They were the ones that got uh, captured. I used my magic. Uh, so it, if it, if an entire party is chaotic evil, it works out. Yeah. If one person is chaotic evil, <laughs> it doesn't. If you have the one party member that's chaotic evil, uh. So you have to pander to them for the yeah. entire campaign. You either yeah. do that, or, or the uh, other party members are the, forced to kill them. Yeah. So yes. uh, I had a I had a 
I think he was lawful evil or something like that, but he was an asshole. And he'd specifically, like, friendly fire us left and right, so I just shot him with, like, eight arrows in one or two turns and killed him. Because I was sick of his shit. And I usually the tried DM to play true, just like, uh, true neutral characters. Yeah, true I mean, neutral is alright. I like it, uh, chaotic good, because you can do whatever you want, uh, and still it's within your character to go along with the campaign. Yeah. So I actually have some stories for why I was so heavy into mm -hmm. uh, role playing it's, it's as, as far as like trying to do like player knowledge and character knowledge and keeping those separate and everything like that to the, almost to a fault was because uh, other members of the party were so bad at separating player knowledge from character knowledge that oh, it was actually yeah. breaking mm -hmm. sessions. Like in Vampire yeah. the Masquerade, there was a part where we were in a, some sort of neighborhood at night and mm -hmm. I just stood there on the lawn outside the house instead of going in because I had no particular reason to want to go in, but two uh -huh. other two other members of the party, uh, Jake and Ben, were both just in a hurry to like plunder these houses like they were dungeons or something. I'm like, this is a neighborhood in modern day. What is happening right now? <laughs> they burst mm -hmm. in. They set someone on fire. There's like a flaming person running out, and like they're like, what? oh, and, okay. Like there's they're and like then the cops people. show up and they're like, oh, like, shit, just, vampires. I'm literally just Let's standing outside and staying away, and they're and they're giving me shit for being a spoil sport. I'm like, L I literally don't know what's happening. What are you guys doing right now? <laughs> and a, a really bad one was one of my. I had a hunter die of mummy rot at one point. And mm -hmm. uh, I br came back with a druid with a shape shifting ability. Uh, the expand the extended rules one in a D and D where three point five where you get a druid that doesn't get a familiar, but they can instantly shape shift be between characters yeah. that uh, and those individual shape shifts instead of being the monster from the mon uh, the monster manual actually are like separate character sheets that you keep on your character. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it was a really fun character to play. Uh, but I was being introduced to the, par the party in the uh, as part of this like jungle temple. And my solution was to be a passive observer. So, like, they uh -huh. would just periodically notice, like, in the distance, like, a white animal that wasn't engaging with them. <laughs> and they'd be, like, a white wolf mm -hmm. and a white owl and stuff like that. And I wasn't I wasn't attacking them and I wasn't talking to them or anything. And I, wasn't, I was just observing because I was role-playing a character that had encountered them just out in the wild dur during their mission because I was but trying to reintroduce a new character to the campaign. They never ben just starts attacking me. Oh. <laughs> oh. Ben just yeah. starts attacking random neutral wildlife mm. that's not aggressive for no reason, <laughs> even though he was like a lawful <laughs> good monk. <laughs> because he knows it's me played, uh, and he's trying uh, to force me. Yeah. But like that's not how character knowledge works. <laughs> yeah. Mm. yeah. I only played one game of um, Vampire the Masquerade. I played two sessions of it. And yeah. uh, I was a level one character that had the ability to summon uh, complex machinery out of thin air, which was ridiculous. So <laughs> I would be in situations where I I I just like min max so hard that no joke, my character was able to summon shotguns out of thin air and use them to kill people. How does it that was even... the most overpowered? <laughs> Why like, would a DM even I'd let you done? do that? After a certain point, I'd be like, <laughs> you don't even understand what you're doing. You make a dud. <laughs> I did it, like, twice, and then we all just kind of realized that, like, the game itself, like, the rule set was just not working for us, and it was, like, uh, like, everybody else had reasonable characters, but my character was so stupidly overpowered, um, because by level three, I had the ability to, like, summon cars out of thin air, and, <laughs> like, what? and Wait. like, another couple levels, I would have been able to, like, make, like, airplanes, I'm sure, were these um, custom classes, or did they have no, just very bad like a, class balance? This very bad class balance. Like, uh, there's one thing that allows you to like um, assemble, like basically like summon things out of thin air. And like level one is you can summon like like amorphous blobs yeah. of like a given weight. And then like level three allows you to summon complex machinery, but like small ones. And I think like mm -hmm. level five lets you summon like cars, basically. Uh. Uh, Tremere Path of Conjuring. Yeah, somebody in my... Wow, yeah, that's exactly right. Somebody in my chat instantly identified what I did. And they said <laughs> I could have summoned nukes. <laughs> yeah, I was but yeah, actually Tremere thinking Path of, of Conjuring, that's what I did. I was able to summon um, literally the solution to every single puzzle that was thrown our way. <laughs> wow. Yeah. That's, so Green Lantern. It was a pretty dick thing to do. Yeah, it was like the super Green Lantern. <laughs> the, uh... It was a dick thing to do. So my character knowledge <laughs> stories come to a, the, a climax that I, we, we would later call the Palpatine moment. 
mm-hmm. which is that uh, Ben was playing a lawful good monk, and he had like this oath of uh, poverty or something. Like he had, he just had multiple things layered on that were dependent on him behaving a certain way, and if he behaved yeah. out of character, that he'd break like either his class or elements of his class and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, what happened is we had they used we used the. Uh, the deck of many or whatever it's called that deck you redraw cards. Oh, that thing is cool. I and like crazy that. things happen. I like I I we, our turtle friend got like a property castle or something like that. Uh, mm-hmm. The NPC guiding us on the quest also drew from the deck and drew another servant character basically. Uh, so our NPC had an NPC that followed them around, which is weird. <laughs> uh, but That's the NP- weird. but the main the important imp- imp- story NPC died in a fight. And the other NPC flipped out for a second and, like, started screaming. And we incapacitated it. And immediately Ben was like, we need to execute this thing. It's not even it's it's not even a real thing anyway, and it's dangerous and all this other stuff. While mm-hmm. all of us are like, we actually don't know if it's a real sentient creature. Like, this is kind of a, this is kind of a mm-hmm. mess. But Sid, uh, our ex-DM, but was now a, just a party member, because uh, we're trying to teach somebody else how to DM... Uh, He's you know he's he, like I'm 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 sitting here being re- like being reasonable like not not in character but in just as a guy sitting at the table trying to explain to Ben like how it's totally out of character for him to be trying to, to just straight up murder something like that but mm-hmm. Sid is like being Emperor Palpatine and just going do it do it and it's because he built <laughs> up it. so much frustration Kill over the, the last few months over Ben's be- lack uh-huh. of role playing that he just wanted him to do it so it would trigger breaking his character. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like the whole time I thought Sid was being unreasonable but he literally had a plan the whole time and I'm like oh <laughs> I should have just let this happen that would have been perfect so but some that... more comments from my chat uh, in Vampire the Masquerade you can summon nukes by level 3 and by level 5 you can summon NPCs jeez wow <laughs> uh, and then the other one is just a pun De- uh, deck of many ways to ruin the campaign that's yes, yep. not inaccurate. That's, it doesn't. Se- yeah, it seems like one of those, those types of bullshit items that you should not really well, include. The thing about uh, the deck it, of it many depends. things. If you have a chill group, it's a pretty fun way to mix things up if things yeah. get stale. Well, the problem like is that. the deck of many. The deck of many things wasn't even that. Oh shoot! No, so there's two the different. He, he doubled out. He did it twice. Where one, he gave us all a wish, and then he yes. also let us draw from the deck of many things. Oh, uh, in, in the that's same dumb. campaign, and it was yeah. his first campaign. <laughs> Basically, he had no idea how to keep things going then. And it yep. was just like, let's just introduce crazy so, Yeah. The thing with Deck of Many Things, and I've had to show up in two campaigns. One, it killed the first character to draw from it. Straight up, like, it deletes <laughs> well, them from yeah, existence. Well, yeah, that's what it's supposed to do. <laughs> uh, which was hilarious. Um, mm-hmm. And then the other one was... Um, it... Uh, I drew from it, I think, like, ten times or something like that. And the NPC was also drawing from it. Um... And you're trying to open up like a portal to hell. Yeah. So my character was, uh, my character was like, fuck this shit. You know, I'm out. Uh, cause he just found out that his like mm-hmm. patron deity was, uh, like the God of lies effectively. And so I'm like, fuck oh, it. Wow. I don't care anymore. So I just like start just drawing cards left and right. And then I get a wish and I'm like, <laughs> I wish the main villain out of existence. And that was it. And then we kept going. It was great. That's uh, pretty it's funny. Ol- it's the uh, only time I, deck of many things has ever I been would... fun. I would like to end a campaign one day with, like, uh, it, it's, like, years after, like, one of the characters settled down and has a kid, and the kid <laughs> decides to play 52-card pickup with a deck of many things. Oh, no! Like, they and still kept it around. it on the floor and just, like, and sings the, the song that ends the world. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'd be actually really okay with a campaign that's, like, picks up as that starts, like, just some... <laughs> oh, God. Just some kid actually... Like Fuck the premise somebody. of the entire deck is fifty-two card pickup of fate. <laughs> It'd be one of the best ways to have you must like a find all the cards and deposit them back into their box. Yeah, I was gonna say it'd be like a post-apocalyptic <laughs> card, card captors D and D campaign. I'd, <laughs> yeah. I think that would actually be a great concept. <laughs> that, I would actually play that. That sounds really fun. <laughs> so what? I, what? I, oh, well, when I try to explain D and D to people, like why it's interesting and stuff like that, is that like. It's cool because you come up with an idea of the vague concepts of like stories to have happen, but then you mm-hmm. go into this like all the fun comes from the detail in that yeah. you have a concrete set of rules that governs everything and the way that the results of those random chance and en- entries to it 
manifest themselves is what makes the thing itself become like yeah. quickly quickly the weird things that no one planned are the actual thing that that you remember from the story and not what the actual yep. goal was like i don't even remember the plots of any of the campaigns i did but like there's that there was that moment of like like i said before where i did like perfect stealth rolls over and over again then failed the last possible second then the enemy did great grapple okay. checks over and over again then failed the last second like that kind of nonsense i I am looking at this deck of many things, by the way. This is an uh-huh. amazing campaign idea. Like, I really like this. Um, <laughs> yeah, something. <laughs> something's alignment with I'm campaign. reading them. They're yeah. awesome. Like, they are okay. great. Did this question so, just spawn future occurrences? I think, it, I think, I think it did. I would actually be totally down to do it. Yeah. So I, I'm reading this now, and like, I think the way you do it is you'd have to do it like you could do it intentionally. Like, you knew which which card was where, and you had to go get it. Yeah. Just because if you had to choose from these randomly, you could fuck up the campaign real fast. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah. Like, the hilarious one would be, like, imagine if you got uh, the night card last, which is gain the service of a fourth-level fighter. Like, who cares? Just in yeah. time for the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Whereas, like, the other, uh, some of the other ones are, like, change alignment instantly. You were imprisoned. Uh, yeah. <laughs> you could see. even, know the like, answer theme all the dungeons uh, around the card that's contained within them. That is a long campaign. <laughs> well, I mean, like, well, yeah, you can have you multiple know, cards per dungeon, but like the point uh-huh. would be like you're you're specifically trying to like plan your route so it doesn't ruin your party because like yeah. one yeah. of them is you are imprisoned. The characters either intelligence you have score to, is permanently lowered. You have to yeah. get through that dungeon as fast as possible, or else everyone ends up being a stupid dumbass by the time no, no, you're done with no, it. No, 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 <laughs> no. You have to set up a fall guy for that. One of the party members has to take that. Same thing uh-huh. with the imprisoned one, and the alignment changed instantly and stuff like that. Like, yeah. Uh, the, oh god, the yeah, idea of a party trying so to... good. <laughs> it does sound good. I love this idea. All right, uh, let's start the next podcast with thirty minutes of D and D campaign. What? And go from there. <laughs> I don't know about what, that. <laughs> one of my uh, one of my favorite little combat incur- incurrences that happened at one point was I was playing as the uh, the shape shifting druid, and I had what I basically used as a speed form, which is like a, a form of like dire wolf that just had a ridiculous uh, a ridiculous a ridiculous like run distance that could do per mm-hmm. turn. Mm-hmm. We were assaulting a castle covered with like a line of archers. And I just in one turn sprinted around the corner of the castle out of line of sight without taking any hits along the way. The entire mm-hmm. rest of the party is trying to slowly make their way towards the enemy and taking cover and all these things while I'm nowhere near them. I use uh, stone bending or stone shape or whatever to create yeah. a hole in the wall. Yep. And mm-hmm. I'm and it turns out to be their armory. And there's yes. no one there. So I nice. turn into a dire bear. And one by one, the dice roll makes the story more interesting because each archer keeps trying to shoot. The archers start critically missing, and actually, and the way that the 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 uh, DM interpreted that was that their bows would snap. Yeah. And so mm. they'd have to go to the armory to uh, get a new weapon so they could try to keep taking out the rest of the party. So one by one, a bunch of unarmed archers kept coming down to a room with a dire bear full of swords. <laughs> <laughs> and like it was the most weird ending for a that's a, bizarre. Uh, the most yeah, uh-huh. like the most bizarre weird circumstance no one planned of how to how the siege falls <laughs> is that basically well, the rest our, of the party was in just our last dummies. campaign <laughs> um my the the story arc of my character like was so satisfying i have to say <laughs> yeah um so oh. i was playing as a character who uh he started out as basically like a poor hunter who was like the nephew of a baron. Um, and by a series of him basically just being like totally like just bragging and like kind of surrounding himself with useful people, he managed to like <laughs> constantly put himself like in like this like very famous and good light. And it ended with him being so popular um, that he like kept climbing the Had political the ladder. And he, he ended up, uh, um, like, I ended up retiring that character, and he went off to become a king. And he just <laughs> became an NPC in the background. And, like, that was just, like, such a great story. It was totally unplanned. It was just, like, other people would do things, but he was able to, like, tell stories and, like, kind of bullshit his, like, role in those actions to the point where NPCs, like, basically just loved the guy. <laughs> well, my character was only interested in finding her grandfather, so she wasn't yeah. going to be running kingdoms. Also, she wasn't even human. Well, True. only part human. 
I think, yeah. I think this is why most campaign premises are super simple and straightforward, because otherwise they just get in the way of all the weird Real random writing. stuff that can happen. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. it gets bizarre sometimes, and it's just fantastic. Yeah. Well, I mean, the whole point of it is to be a storytelling thing. And yeah. in, in fact, it could be fun. I, have, I, I, I think that a lot of um, interactive uh, media really does boil down to, like, some sort of consistent thing that you interact with to get a story experience out of it. Yeah. Uh, with a certain amount of, like, restraints on, like, what the story is, like, what, um, what comes out of it. Like, if you're playing, like, a video game, it's usually very much like, this is going to be your experience with, like, very little deviation. But uh, sometimes it's not, like, so restrictive. But in D&D &D is that, like, very... Um, it's it's so unrestrained. Like the rules are just there to barely like guide you into creating your own um, reality yeah, and it's essentially story an improv and stuff session for people that don't know anything about about improv. Yep. Hey, yeah. we all played make believe when we were little, did we not? Uh, no, that's true. I mean, a lot of successful like uh, acting improv games do have pretty strict uh, like structure and rules to them. So Keith didn't play make believe. He played make no. business. <laughs> <laughs> I think we talked it's before, like, would you but like, like some I basically tea? never like, played yes, with toys. I will, I will uh, trade you five dollars <laughs> for the tea. I don't think Thank you've you. ever mentioned that successful Keith. transaction. I feel like that came up on a previous podcast because we've done I, like I had too twenty many plus toys. of them now. Too yeah. many. Yeah, I never cared about toys. Uh, I always played video games or watched stuff or read things, but I never really cared about like playing with toys. I was never uh, really see, exposed just, to video games, so yeah. I did well, all of those things. I think it's just toys don't really have their potential is sort of like what you guys were talking about with D and D. They're just a visual aid in something yeah. that you have to create for yourself, pretty much. Yeah, I uh, I played with toys a lot, and uh, I like you said exactly that. It was like a visual aid, and I can still kind of remember. Um, as I got older, uh, your ability to visualize through toys starts to fade. And then all of a sudden, like, when you're playing with a toy and you're a little kid, it's not just that toy. Like, you're able to strongly visualize, like, this whole world around it. Um, but then as you get older, if you look at a toy, you just see it for what it is. And then it sucks. <laughs> yeah. I, I will admit, as I've grown older, the toys I've gotten have definitely gotten, like, more, um... Well, toys suck now. Yeah, yeah, but, maybe. like, uh, all of my the, toys they're, they're or product. the things that I'd, like, want are artistically and, like, aesthetically pleasing more than, like, any kind of, you know, functionality. Like, if you look at Transformers from the 90s versus now, there is a stark difference in, like, the quality of the plastics, the modeling, the... I think it varies. Ability. There were some really shitty Transformers back in the day. But there were some like really hey, nice ones. But that's mainly just because awesome. there was actually a market for it. The market for Transformers toys has gone from you know being a relatively like open thing to mostly niche. Yes, ish. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I I played a lot with uh, you know those little sort of rubbery animals that you would find at various stores. Oh sometimes yeah, yeah. For models I did those like for dinosaurs. Yeah, Lots of yeah. dinosaur toys we like that. We had dinosaurs, we had wolves, we had leopards, mm -hmm. you know, all those. And the interesting thing was there was this huge plant that we used to have in the living room. I forget what species it was, but it just sort of entwines itself out and it has all these leaves on the ends. And it almost looked like a jungle in there. And I would have my animals, you know, jumping from bough to bough and stalking prey and mm -hmm. things like that. Meanwhile, so, I, was, I was the questions? asshole who would buy, uh, I would buy Lego sets, and then I'd actually build the diorama on the box. Oh, <laughs> see, I would build, I would build the diorama, and then I would, uh, after that, destroy it, and then just like incorporate it into my giant Lego box. And do whatever I wanted, <laughs> yeah, I, I would use it for so many things. Every time I get a Lego set, I'd open it up, I'd make it once, I'd take it apart unless it was really, really cool, and that was the end of it. Exactly. That's we what had I did. more Playmobil than we had Legos. Then you had a bad childhood. Well, oh. <laughs> so we, we had Mega Box too. Unfortunately, it was only for the Dragon series because they had really nicely done dragons. You could put little uh, amulets in their neck, in their neck piece, and it would glow. It would make their eyes and their mouth glow. So, you know, mm -hmm. breathing fire and the like. They could flap their wings. 
And they had uh, these nose rings that then led to chains that you could use as the reins for riders and such. Hmm. Those were cool sets. And the whole point of that was they had this little story about going around it where there was, you know, a noble king and his armies facing a barbarian horde led by, you know, a rival king. So they had two different colored armor sets and they were each trying to claim uh, the medallions so that they could take possession of the dragons because the dragon with the respective color medallion had to bow to the will of the one who possessed the medallion. And there were like puzzles and secret chambers and ancient ruins. Sorry, I'll stop. You're making a face. <laughs> it was just, it was cool. I know it was cool. I it's actually have a toy question, kind of. Okay. Hmm? Anonymous asks, if you were a transformer, what would your oh. alt form be? I'm sorry, it's not anonymous. It's the hooded teddy. No. Oh. <laughs> Figure. I mean, what? because my favorite series is Beast Wars, it would probably be an animal. And can my, can my alt mode be human? <laughs> yeah. Then I'm just a human that turns into just a robot. The flesh splits, and it's just like. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't they have that, I mean, that in one of the more recent like Transformer dude. movies? <laughs> <laughs> That's that called either that like or the is baked in really weirdly. Two. Yeah. It would definitely be something like a dragon, though. If it could be something mythological. Because, I mean, dragons are awesome. I have no idea what I would turn into. Uh, okay. How about... How about... Um, how about a Calliope? Ah. Oh. Okay. That's interesting. Uh. Do you mean the goddess or the... No, I mean the, the organ. Oh, that they, that they had at zoo or uh, like zoos and circuses and stuff. Oh, that. Yeah, I see. I was just thinking, like, what's the most musical like vehicle I can think of? So just be like, oh. like that thing that's like bird would be like one of those one band band carts. Those were always my yeah. favorite part of riding the the carousels. Except when I when I was a, a child, I would call them the mm. merry go cells. The merry-go cells. Yes, because hmm. I was mixing carousel and merry-go-round together. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, oh, those are cute. I was totally yeah. right. It was like Transformers Two or something was the one where there was a girl named Alice who just r splits apart into like a horrible bladed monstrosity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot there about was that. A, that was, was weird. I didn't like that part. Yeah, they didn't bring that one back. <laughs> No, I think it, I think the problem reasons. with that was it was starting to get too close to the Terminator, if you know what I mean. Like the the Terminator Three had the lady, right? And she had the similar she had a similar skill set to the guy from the second Terminator, with the being able to bend. I don't know if anyone remembers Terminator Three. I was gonna say I don't know. <laughs> I remember enough of it. Is that she... was the was that the thumbs up one or no? No, no, no that was Terminator, was that Terminator two. two. Yeah, you're right. We've and had three consecutive awesome. Terminators now that no one really remembers after watching them. Oh yeah, because yeah, there was the fourth one with wasn't Christian Salvation. Bale in it or someone? Yeah, which it as was far the one as you can tell, just took place in the desert. Salvation yeah, that was, was starring awkward. the guy that makes movies yeah. forgettable. Wait, isn't the, <laughs> the isn't there another Avatar one with Arnold and... Schwarzenegger? Yeah, the fifth one. Yeah, is the, the one that has Daenerys in it. Again, yeah. Uh, I, I actually want to see that just because it looks she, campy and dumb. Is she playing Sarah As Sarah opposed Connors to like, trying something? to be serious. When I talk to people who saw Genesis, they already don't remember it. Uh, Dang. Well, guess I'm not Which is spending exactly money how on I that feel one. when I because I saw Terminator uh, Salvation and I don't remember it. I So <laughs> I all. remember enough of Salvation to remember it was bad. I still can't get behind the Though fact that... They did that a very good job at making a fake uh, fake young Schwarzenegger. Like, it looked... They did that part really well, for whatever reason. So, uh, how how well technology. do you think you can remember any movies that ever starred Sam Worthington? Uh, so who's Sam Worthington? What movie was he in? Yeah. He's Is like... He, was he Avatar? He's Avatar, Terminator Salvation, oh, and... right. Uh, yeah, Draft Terminator Salvation Titans. was the one that uh, actually, sank his career, now that I'm thinking about it, because he was too typecast, and nobody wanted to get him after that one. I haven't he did seen Clash Wrath of the, of the Titans. Titans. He did something about somebody uh, jumping off of a building or something. Man on a ledge or something. And, like, 
it's just an entire period of films After like he was Terminator in all these... salvation and avatar it looks like his next things on his wikipedia are like voice acting for call of duty games yeah oh. uh, so i i saw oh. like a i saw a, dis, uh, a discussion piece on like why his career bombed and the problem is he only picked roles or he was only cast for roles that did the exact same thing and he never really had any diversity so uh-huh. it, and all of those roles like after avatar were so unremarkable because it, it didn't change it was uh-huh. just kind of the same role over and over and over again. But look like, at Bruce Willis. He like had a huge career of he pretty did, much being but the same he did character. it at a time when people wanted that. Yeah. Also, you mm-hmm. know what Bruce Willis was at one point? Not anymore, uh. but once upon a time, Bruce Willis was charming. <laughs> yeah. You like, remember I, all I, of I the remember... amazing charisma Sam Worthington had? No. <laughs> no, he was he was he was definitely He's like just protagonist man. <laughs> yeah, he was kind of the He's... flat, gruff. It... Kind of angry just like white John dude. Every man. <laughs> oh I mean, god, Jack this is Reacher depressing. Has if you more, go to his IMDb, like, it says yeah. known for Avatar, Clash of Titans, Terminator Salvation, uh, Wrath of the Titans. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it just gives up and names the even worse sequel of the other bad franchises. <laughs> but but Clash of the Titans, like the original Clash of the Titans, that had you know stop motion animation by but that's, Roddenberry. That's not what yeah. we're talking about the, here. Oh, uh, yeah, that's not it. Also, I Bruce know. Willis's career is shit now too. Yeah, well, like, he's he also a good old, history, so it doesn't matter. I was gonna say he's he, he is. It's he's in so many. Career. He's in like multiple movies a year, oftentimes, and they're movies that no one knows about because they're garbage and never went to theaters. Because mm-hmm. he's what becoming up? the same thing as a. Uh, uh, what's what was na- what was the nature hippie action hero guy again? Nature hippie action hero. Hmm. He used Are to be talking more- about Rampart. The guy that, like, he usually plays a Native American character, and I don't know if that's accurate or not. I don't know if he actually, if it makes sense for him to be playing them, but he does. Well, I only know of a couple of Native American actors. But, like, did anyone watch Fire with Fire? Mm -mm. (laughs) No. I mean, you are the cinemaphile. Amongst our entire group, so what? Well, I just mean like that's, uh, that's I, like no one's Keith heard of it. But that's a, way but more. But it's a Bruce Willis movie, is what I mean. Like uh, maybe I watched the exceptionally they, old movies. You used, to, you used to know every Bruce Willis movie up until around the terrible Die Hard sequel. <laughs> yeah. Which one? Live, live free or Die Hard. Hey, like, the second that's and like the third the exact one were moment okay. His career stopped being something people people paid attention to. That's when he started being well, stuff like Cop Out and Red. But the Fifth Element was great. Yeah, but that was 20 years ago. Danny yeah. Trejo? Um, is that what you were talking about earlier? Uh, no, not... It is going to be uh, 20 years ago. Trejo was charming, so... though. Let's like see, he's, he is action. actually very charming yeah. still, like, I think. I, I, I was, watching, uh, I was about... watching a random YouTube video the other day, and he just showed up in it, and I was like, uh-huh. what? Guys, guys, Why? Ba- talking about uh, actors with similar uh, roles, how about Keona Reeves? He, he yeah. screwed himself really hard for a while. I'm actually really glad he um, he ended up in uh, John Wick, even though it like doesn't really diversify him that well. D- John but Wick was good. Really that Damn, good movie. I, I haven't yeah. seen John. Wick, I actually though. didn't like John Wick that much. I feel like they didn't make him into enough of a capable of individual comparatively. Mm. But mm-hmm. um, I thought it was he, a good way for Keanu Reeves to get uh, himself back into a a series that wasn't kind of garbage. Because, uh-huh. like, he's kind of typecast because he's half Japanese, which is a rare thing in Hollywood. Um, mm-hmm. And he's actually, like, also probably one of the nicer actors that I've ever heard about. Like, the yeah, dude he's gave really cool. up, like, mm-hmm. most of his money from the one of so the Matrix give to the movies. CGI. Yeah, yeah, to give it to the CGI team, which was, like, not a small amount of money. And I was like, damn, mm-hmm. like... Respect earned, even if, even if I don't like his movies. And I was like, eh, let's Aside go see John Wick, being, and it was like, good. sort of the cold protagonist that's very quiet and taciturn in many of his films. Yeah. I saw him in, what was it, a Sandra Bullock film? It was, what, The House by the Water, or... Ah, uh, I forget. That was some weird time-traveling stuff. He's where... off doing, like, Tai Chi movies now, basically. Tai Chi movies? I yeah. took Tai Chi in college. He even did a movie house. called Man of Tai Chi, where he where he's leading yeah, role. Yeah, I'm reading about that right now. And he directed it. <laughs> oh. Yeah. He uh, he also was apparently going to play Spike in a in um a Cowboy Bebop movie that yeah. never oh, materialized. Oh, right. I I heard about that. I actually was excited about that because I think yeah, he'd I make really a decent Spike. 
And I think it's uh, probably in, in development hell right now. Yeah, though, I wouldn't apparently be surprised. Apparently budgeting issues. Yeah. It, oh, it's well. also one of those where I would actually really like to see some anime movies, like... Well, what about with Ghost in the Shell? No, that's... I mean, no. that's, I'm worried about that's, that one. That's Dragon Ball. <laughs> Are you... Did uh, you... Someone named the actor I was trying to think of before. It's Steven Seagal. Oh, oh, yeah. oh yeah. yeah. Bruce Willis has that guy. He does Seagal play Native now. American okay. guys. Why? Yeah. yeah, he doesn't even look like it. Oh, dude, read his, um, I believe it's He's, IMDb. His movies are a lot of like, I'm going around the forest, and I'm a force of nature, and I'm going to defend what the green has he played? and stuff. Okay, Steven Seagal <laughs> is, like, still in a shit Seagal. ton of movies. I, that's what I call him. I know it's Seagal, okay. but it, uh, makes, it, it makes me giggle when I call him S Steven Seagal. Um... <laughs> So what are the, what are the like, movies he's been in? I, I he's okay. So I've he's kind name. of he he kind of did the Chuck Norris thing where he's like random white dude that's really good at martial arts for whatever reason in every movie he's in. Okay. Um, yeah. And like, well, what movies has he been in? <sighs> Steven Seagal. Uh, I don't know. He was in like. Uh, it wasn't like anything like major. He was just kind of in a lot of. Like martial artsy movies. Why are you getting pictures well, of okay. hey. TV There's several. Type of okay, things, here we go. Right? Steven, oh, him. Steven Seagal. Um, I, I love his IMDb. Okay, yeah. here we go. <laughs> Did you read that? Have you read that yet? I'm gonna read this no, out. I'm gonna read it. Steven Seagal is a striking and somewhat boyishly handsome, often with a ponytail, action star who burst onto the martial arts film scene in 1990, uh, 1988, in the fast-paced Warner Bros. film Above the Law. And oh, he was born in Michigan? Oh, but that explains the just, it. The boyishly handsome, often with a ponytail thing, was just like, what? So he if was you in, look at no. pictures of him, he doesn't look boyish He's at all. He's in a lot of movies every year. Yeah, so... What? Oh, no, as producer, executive always producer. Working. Uh, yeah, yeah. He, is, he is working. He's put out at least one movie a year. He's... Have you, have you heard of Steven Seagal Lawman, though? No. Oh, God. Okay. Well, I'm going to sidebar into this to tell you about one of the funniest, worst reality TV shows out there. Oh, It's called oh, okay. Steven Seagal Law, man. So for whatever reason, it, uh, Louisiana made Steven Seagal like an honorary cop. And okay. okay. He, like, this was like, like a long time ago. Is it just that you've done so many action movies where you portray a yeah. cop? We're going to make you a cop. Right, so he gets okay. he becomes an honorary police officer, and then uh, in like 2010 or something like that, he decides uh, to make a reality TV show where he goes around as a police officer and does like citizens arrests, and it's called Steven Seagal Law Man, and it's just like every episode is just like somebody like like doing some really minor crime, and then Steven Seagal comes up and like puts him under arrest basically. And they're just like, are you Steven Seagal? And he's, he always, I forget what he said. He had like some really cheesy reaction to this. And he was like, no, I'm just a cop or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> but in this like dumb Steven Seagal voice, it's like, no, I'm just a cop. <laughs> wow. Oh, anyway, I was watched a couple episodes. Was he properly trained? Was there anyone that ever put up a fight? Like. No, I don't think so. Uh, he did this. Uh, he. Okay, here it is. Uh, he was a reserve deputy sheriff uh, in Louisiana and then also in Arizona. Awesome. All right. Yeah, his, his movie career took off. Did it, though? No. And when I say took off, I mean, like, <laughs> he managed like the to get enough that he's that known he... for is things I've never heard of. Yeah, like, he managed to get himself ingratiated into the film community and like some se subsection of it for a while and then he just never really like he just kind of has stayed there forever and it's just his Even niche well, I mean, was the actor have you ever that seen his... not to just click on things on netflix on a whim have you ever seen his like acting chops it's he's just like bad uh, steven just stands actors there are dead uh, now, which uh, is sad punch you. so oh one day on netflix i randomly clicked films. on a steven Seagal movie called maximum conviction which is a Steven Seagal, Steve Austin movie. And oh. what's funny oh. is that they're oh. already both Wait, not like actors. Like Stone which is Cold? Funny, but yes, yes. It's, it's Stone Cold Steve Austin. So wow. they're both not actors because it's, it's a non-actor with a wrestler. <laughs> and 
but was amazing. Well, I mean, was that's, such, an, it, that's acting. Wrestling's but, fake, Keith. Yeah, but it, it was such a it was such a low budget movie that he, it wouldn't put the title characters together. Like they were both breaking into a, a they were both going in to basically a prison that was being taken over and like to take out the bad guys and everything. But they entered from two different parts of the prison and are completely separate from each other for like the entire film and are basically never on screen to each, with each other besides one part where wow. they're briefed about what they need to do. And do they that's communicate it. via cell phone or something or what's going yeah. on? Well, like it was just cutting back and forth between the two of them having their stories go in parallel because they couldn't. It's like they clearly took save uh, money on shooting, just shot the, all the scenes with the two actors completely separately from each other uh, to the point where there's wow. scenes where the two of them are talking to each other and it's cutting from one to the other, but never showing them in frame together to the point uh, where, like they might have actually been <laughs> just talking at nothing and then stitched them they together into were. one scene. <laughs> They didn't even get a double to like have the back of the head at least. Yeah, no. so like it was like two C-list actors, but also they couldn't bother to make it e- even use what, them. What well. location did the movie take pl- place? It was in just too. some prison. That's probably like oh, the it's... prison that's in every movie. That's just a Hollywood set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's probably the same it's prison like... they used in Walking Dead or something. Yeah. Oh yeah, that prison. It's like we gotta <laughs> save Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's really cool. Oh no, stuff like Branson, that. Missouri is under attack. I'm really, I'm really amused by how you can look up uh, video compilations of like specific Hollywood sets to see how often they're used in different movies. Like the, yeah. what is it, the Halle Berry horror movie she had at some point in a prison. Like you can look up Cat that Woman. location and see it in like twelve movies, and it's really strange cutting between all these different. Oh. I feel really systems. bad for Halle Berry. She never should have even touched Catwoman. Yeah, that yeah. was a bad one. <laughs> that really set her back off. Big time. <laughs> that he hilarious. killed her career. She hasn't been in any any good movies since. Uh, I think she's so briefly. Funny. I thought she was in like a Bond movie. Yeah, it wasn't she? Was Bond she was in that? Bond before yeah. that. Oh, oh yeah, that, that, was that, that was with that oh, was okay. with Pierce Brosnan. Yeah, and she did a oh. decent job in that one. And then she actually had like a number of gigs well, and was, was doing Storm quite well. In the X-Men yeah, and but like, stuff like that. at this point, I think she was. Now she's yeah, someone she was who stars in the movie Forty Three. Yeah, but like. She she was pretty hot on Hollywood for like a while. And she was in then, Cloud Atlas too. Wow, she yeah. knows how to pick him. <laughs> <laughs> Cloud, Cloud Atlas, Atlas is the movie that should have been good, but it looks yeah. like such what a happened. good movie when you're watching <laughs> it. And then, <laughs> then you watch a little bit of it and you're like, oh, I'd it rather do bizarre. some dishes. <laughs> Cloud Atlas is is one of those. It's a Wachowski special where it's a movie yeah. that it's it's terrible, but as you're watching it, it's constantly almost convincing you it's good. Because it's like everything <laughs> about exactly it should the be good. So, the actors mm-hmm. are good. Oftentimes, even like the dialogue so or the deep. premise could be good. That's what but it's it so seems stupid. like. Stupid. <laughs> yeah, the premise is usually like interesting ish enough. I don't know. Yeah, like people. I will so give Wachowski's credit though. I I like Sense Eight a lot, and I'm waiting. I'm looking forward to seeing if like you mean that, Cloud that Atlas is going to continue, right? Sense Eight is Cloud Atlas's like reboot, it, basically. It like, is. They're, like, we're going to try parallel like stories Sense8. again now. <laughs> yeah, I like I like Sense Eight. I think Sense Eight is uh, almost crash. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I mean, it's not the, a perfect show, but I'm just saying, like, I, I enjoyed it. I want to see more more of it come out eventually. I'm imagine there's someone like maybe Wander who doesn't know what Crash or Sense8 is or the Wachowskis nope. are and it's just like a series well, of I know, like, I know who the Wachowskis throwing are. Around. <laughs> Crash yeah. I did not enjoy. I, after the Matrix I kind of oh, washed my hands with the Wachowskis. <laughs> I was like, Cloud Atlas seems nice. Oh, never mind. <laughs> they made something that has a cult following. Uh, Before the Matrix even, I think. Speed Racer. But they really? Made, they made Speed Racer. Oh, yeah, they made I Speed forgot. Racer, which is the weirdest yeah. side thing, and people that's like it's divisive, but some people mm-hmm. are super into that one. I have never seen that. I actually want to, because if I remember it, wasn't that like your Raptor's decent. favorite movie I never for a while? It, but yeah. Yep. That's oh, a no. weird reason to want to see a movie. What <laughs> Eco Raptor? Raptor? Liked it. Well, yeah. no, a, he like would not shut up about it for like several that, series of Speed his. Speed Racer, the animated television series yeah. with four different pilots. No. Um, you're no, thinking it's Thunderbirds. No, no, no. No, there was a Speed Racer animated television series. Okay, so but, there's Speed Racer, but it was all about one guy whose name Name's might have Speed. Even, yeah, been Speed Racer or something stupid yeah. like that. Um, But he had like an older brother who was mm-hmm. also another racer. racer yeah. It, yeah, Racer X. Yeah. It was like... No. It was pretty old, but like there weren't I, four pilots. Well, okay, so they, they yeah. weren't pilot. They had their own cars. 
Let's just put it that way. I remember a version where, yeah, it was the guy, his older brother, another guy that was like a sidekick, and then there was a girl. And yeah, well, he it. has his entire family, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Like, his dad and his his sister, I believe, are like the support crew. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I saw the animated series. I watched enough of it to be like, this is kind of dumb. They're like, <laughs> in a car, and there's a train circling around them somehow, covered in guns, shooting at them, but the car was bulletproof, and I was just like, this is amazingly stupid. <laughs> and I was like, seven. <laughs> Speed Racer and was like, the game where even as a child, I was like, why don't they just edit? Why did edit? you call it a game? Pete, I did again, not everything I? is video yeah, games. I, can't, mm-hmm. I don't think about the word I used at all. <laughs> Speed Racer you're was just, the show it, where... Just like, you, if, where it's a, if it's media that I consume, it must be a video game. <laughs> it becomes just a neutral noun that I just that I just place in the sentence where it's supposed to go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, Speed Racer was the show where even as a kid I was even or I was already thinking, why don't they just edit the show differently so the dialogue makes sense? Because like instead of editing the show differently, they would just dub over the number of times the mouth flap opens and closes. Yeah. But yeah, it was always so a static just, shot. It was verbal diarrhea. It was always a total static shot, and uh-huh. they could have easily edited it without making it look different at all, because it was just yeah. a, per- a perfectly static screen with just one person's mouth going blah 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 over and over again at a weirdly even pace, which yeah. made all their dialogue. I must super go down the, ma- the mountain because the mountain is very fast, and that's the way I get to the finish line. Ha ha! Yeah, they'd set the end sentences with noises because they couldn't find more yeah. words to fit in to make the yeah, right syllable every, count. Every s- most sentences would just end with people going like "uh huh" or like "huh" <laughs> because they ah, needed one ah. more syllable. <laughs> Watch out, Speed Racer! Ah, <laughs> <laughs> it's like thanks, Speed Racer. I'm Speed Racer. You're welcome, Speed Racer. Ha ha! <laughs> it's it's wow. great. I really oh recommend God. watching it. I might have to look up a montage of okay. bad Speed Racer dubs. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Do you want to do you want to do that really quickly? Not no, now. we can't do it right now. Let's do that in the middle of the thing. Between. Any more questions? Uh, that's we've gone on a long that's a personal about... time thing. Yeah, Bert, <laughs> let's do that between and we can we can giggle about it uh, on our own. Uh, so I, I'd like to transition. We were talking about Cloud Atlas being like the, the thing that was almost good. It This is a bit of a stretch considering almost good versus not, but... Uh, Masquerada? I've, no, well, no. we could talk, we could talk about Masquerade if you wanted to. Uh, now that it's not spoilers, I just wanted to comment that like uh, No Man's Sky's patch came out. Oh, and I've been playing it, and I haven't that done anything new yet. On our podcast. Well, yeah. as I recall, yeah. you had gotten yourself in this pickle the last time where you just kept selling <laughs> okay, your stuff so, off. And no, then no, no. Right now, you stuff. can't you can't judge judge the game based on what I'm doing because right now I'm exploiting uh exploiting the economy to make stupid amounts of money so that you can uh, kind ships. of off camera during the podcast so I can buy well, ships and not have camera. to do this when I'm actually streaming it's not off camera and I'm gonna speed like I'm effectively gonna do a time lapse of what I'm doing <laughs> but uh you know instead of like hours later it's like instead of grinding in an RPG you, d- you do the like skip ahead or whatever um but like they did, the, they did. They have base building now, and you can like hire people and shit. And I've actually been like looking at it. The base building looks a hell of a lot nicer than most sandbox RPG, uh, not sandbox RPGs, like sandbox games. Have like, you ever it's seen very human smooth walk and fast yet? and low demand? Uh, you mean another player? Yeah, or I mean, I'm sorry. Have you ever seen like a any humanoid creature walk? No, ever I yet? haven't. No. They still even the people you hire. No, he just teleported. If I remember right. <laughs> oh, they still do that. I think so. Jeez. I wasn't paying full attention because I got distracted by economy. Uh, oh man! I, oh, oh right, dude. yeah. It was one Poor of the wizard no things, sky. and it was it was on a stool, and I think it just like winked out of existence. I'd have to check my. Uh, and you wasted more money and bought the PC version. Uh, it's because the PC version Why? doesn't crash randomly, and also this game is so much <laughs> easier to maneuver on the PC. Like ha- being able to click on shit is nice. Mm. Also mods because there's mods. And also, you can I go just... into the text to change the FOV. Yes. Well, actually, you can change to the FOV now, just like baseline. You could in game, but the meter was the meter would lie to you about what FOV it was giving you, and you had to manually enter a higher FOV into the text than than the interface well, would give you to give you get you a vaguely huh. not nauseating, yeah, not, so not the nauseating F- one. The FOV goes way higher on the PC now, and mm-hmm. I don't have nausea, so uh, they at least got that part kind of right. Yeah, at launch, it was like playing a game through a telescope. Yes. They also fixed the uh, crippling performance issues that plagued the PC version, which is why I didn't end up buying that initially. Because it was... That was... That was awful. 
So are there any I, new they questions? Just, they just talked me out of mind. playing the game so hard because their foundation oh, yeah. update itself description was just like, yeah, this lays the foundation for like future base building. I'm like, so it's like not even a thing yet. Is like what the no, description it's, itself? No, it's there. You can do stuff. Yeah, like uh, their hyperbola Whoa. is kind of a mistake. They really need to just be upfront about like this is this yeah. is what it is exactly. I think it's because they're now terrified of promising anything. Yes, I was going to say the they entire life. Well, I think they're afraid of over their mouths. Like the the, uh, the, I uh, thought the, it the, sounded too through. ambitious. Yeah. I, I'm just glad that they're actually <laughs> still updating this game, which is kind of the yeah. like Stockholm syndrome response. But it's just like, <laughs> eh, give me like four well, or five I mean, more of these patches, and this might actually times, be a decent maybe game. Maybe the lawsuits will stop. Well, actions speak louder than Losses? words, though. So, I mean, yeah. it's better that they're, like, putting out patches rather uh, than honestly, saying, like, yeah, we're going to fix this I, game, and then they never do. I, I guess part of the reason why I'm being forgiving is because, like, Necropolis kind of did the same thing, where, like, they updated the game and fixed nothing. Yeah. Um, yeah, they updated it to make a slightly larger character model to play as, and some enemies yeah. that are technically visually different but just feel like you're fighting the same thing over and over again still this this i mean they still haven't fixed a lot of the glaring issues but it is mm -hmm. actually like a step in the right direction like there's kind of shit to do you can teleport between Our planets and uh stations now you get like really big ships that you can fly around i just think it's so, mm -hmm. all so, these guys so now you can set up box. a base on one planet and keep teleporting back to it yeah, yeah. So you can okay. have like okay. a permanent home planet, which that, also that's what can... I thought was going to be there at launch because I, I know I saw I the pre-launch so stuff. I saw a guy physically walk through a portal that was on a planet to go to another planet, and I'm like, and then at the launch there was no evidence that existed at all. Uh, well, it's in the game now. I don't know how substantive it is. Like, I don't know if you can uh, teleport between multiple bases because I barely had the chance to play because we spent four hours doing scrap mechanic last night. Um, It'd be nice because then you could set up a yeah, base on a, on a planet you really like. And yeah. keep that as your permanent home, but then keep pushing forward and forward through the That's, universe, and then keep uh, retreating back to there to get better resources. As, if as you far can't as find I know, planets. As far as I know, that's exactly what it is. I just I think you can also have multiple bases, but I haven't looked at that yet. Um, but yeah, there's like a teleport menu and stuff like that. So I'll probably report back with more information next time. But the tough it, thing, though, of course, is the next question is: Is there anything fun to do yet? Uh, apart from, like, <laughs> gathering resources and grinding up to get one of the big ships and, like, grinding out a base? No. No, no. Clearly, the only fun part of this game it's... is to find all the animals yeah, the, and proceed the, to record them. The, the like, base, them. the base, like, reason to play uh, this game think... is to grind to get the fancy shit, which, I mean, I'm kind of desensitized because of MMOs, but... I think a lot of people play this game specifically just to get mad at Sean Murray. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, yeah. for a lot of people, that ended up being very fun for them. Yeah, they, that subreddit has been active for five months of nothing, and I yeah. am floored by that. Well, I mean, if you look at the subreddit right now, I just flipped onto it randomly. Like, there's no activity. Now, if there's actually a patch to talk about, it's dead. Well, that's because people are <laughs> playing it now. They are sort playing of. it now. Yeah. Yeah. The, the I, I subreddit admit, was so bad. I remember, like, or, like hearing about game journalism, like outlets like writing about like just the crazy amount of like god it exploded <laughs> yeah i i still feel kind of bad because they really should have just waited like two years to release this game yeah and then it probably actually like... would have been really good they're probably contractually like they obligated by sony to finish pressure. the game yes exactly oh, sony yeah. sony just oversold it and then well, left them and told them the bag when uh I, I think it's a combination the, of that the and they're not trying to be close-lipped because, you know, they were trying to be kind of like there are mysteries here that, like, I'm yeah. still we don't really want to tell people about. I'm really upset that EverQuest Next never got yeah, uh, go ahead. But yeah. it's gone forever. It yeah, really it is. is. Oh, dude, I played Smedley's new game. It's terrible. Mm hmm? Really? Uh, Which one? What's it called? John Smedley uh, is the guy that, uh, he was the kind of weird blonde guy that was always, like, talking about stuff. Oh, Most of the videos. Request videos? Yeah, okay. he was kind of the hype guy slash, like, one of the main designers. So he made a new, uh, -huh. uh he's behind the new game Hero Song okay. on Steam. Okay. It's, like, 20 bucks or something like that. But it's supposed to be this, like, truly procedurally generated, like, living, breathing world. And, like, initially it actually really looked like they crossed uh, Dwarf Fortress with a decent RPG. And then I get into the game and there's, like, there's no map and there's no direction where to go. I'm just in this, like, clearing with a bunch of people who start, like, uh -huh. milling about randomly. And I'm like, okay, now what? 
Um, Clearly procedurally generated. It was procedurally generated to the point where, like, there's no, like, there were no landmarks or anything to Towns, do. Anything. So oh, I pull geez. up the map, which is just this blank piece of paper with, like, five dungeons marked on it. But, like, <laughs> I don't even know which direction I'm going in. So I just start, like, walking in a direction. I find orcs that kill me. And then I, re then I like, go into this, like, weird shadow world area. Uh -huh. And um, that was really confusing. And then I like somehow randomly respawned back at the town and I, I was in and I was just like, so, so it was like, did I do something like bad? Was that shadow world like confusing? But effectively it was I could this like really neat idea and it's just, there's nothing there to back it up. And then it crashed and deleted my character, yeah. which I just spent the last hour on. So I was just like, <laughs> you see? oh, Dude, fuck this. This is the most video game story I've ever heard. <laughs> so... I could see a procedurally generated sci-fi space exploration because, I mean, yeah, there are a lot of unknown territories you can you can explore and planets that have never mm -hmm. been seen before. And, I mean, I think that that's one of the few things No Man's Sky is doing all right. I mean, I like it when you find the ruins and get more dialogue. Uh, the problem uh, like is they didn't have enough set pieces to justify the size. It's like having a giant empty room and having, like, three basketballs in it mm -hmm. and being like, look at all this stuff you can do right, it's right. like it's yes so I can, big it's Where like technically i can play a lot infinite games with these basketballs but after a yeah. certain point i get really sick sick of the it's smell like of when no man's sky basketball. says you can explore a, a single planet for 20 hours or something and it's like but why would anyone why? yeah in reality it's no better yeah. it's yeah. no well, better or worse than spores exploration said uh you can you can procedurally generate a quintillion planets but you can't procedurally generate a, a quintillion things to do yeah, yeah. Right, right, and so that's what I was getting at with uh, Wander said. What you had a pre procedurally generated RPG? How the how could you have a procedurally generated RPG? Where I are mean, the characters? Where so are the locations? You can kind of you can do it. Landscape? You can there has to be you can definitely give it like a lot of set pieces to work off of, and it's not exactly procedurally generation at that point. It's just like stitching together a bunch of different segments. Which, I mean, really is what No Man's Sky does, because so... it stitches together, like, a bunch of weird monsters and ships mm -hmm. together and planets. Um, I mean, I, I think their biggest crime was they just didn't have enough set pieces to justify. Like, I keep wanting to find, like, a waterfall, but water would be hard, so they don't have water. Uh, oh, so, then, like, yeah, waterfalls. Like, I I think they wanted to make three different games, uh, just just like Spore, and they didn't. <laughs> and now they're, they're, now they're pushing it Closer to, like, survival sandbox stuff. They did add a survival mode, which I was interested in. And I've definitely had, like, a bunch of people being like, why aren't you playing survival mode? You literally just get half as many resources and monsters hit you twice as hard. And I'm just like, this doesn't sound fun. This just sounds like more work on a game where it's only about work. There's a creative mode, though, which is actually nice. If they actually allowed you like to, to customize your ships rather than having to buy off of other ones, yeah. wouldn't it be better? Probably. Hopefully they add that later. Anyway, let's let's move off of No Man's Sky cuz this is a topic that let's has move away from No Man's Sky true. like the rest of the planet. <laughs> yeah, I was asking As I keep playing No Man's Sky. Interesting questions from the Tumblr <laughs> since we only seem to cover two or three of them before okay, we go let's, on let's 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 rapid uh let's rapid fire a couple if we can. Okay. Uh do All shit right. do like a bunch of uh like simple tiny ones. Or yeah, we sure. just come up with short or, answers, yeah. even if it's a more complicated uh, would one. Would you ever consider playing COD zombies together as a group, says Mona Lisa 2247. If it was actually cheap, sure. Oh, wait, what's the okay, game I called? Feel like that's, Call of Duty I, Zombies. Call, Call yeah. of Duty Zombies. I feel like that's got to be like 10th huh. place on the list of priorities, though, for zombie co-op games. Oh, yeah, there's a billion other yeah. ones that are more fun. <laughs> yeah, like, I would like play it. How come we yeah, have never done like, that? Yeah. I feel like Call of Duty Zombies is something that I've the only reason anyone before. ever cared about it was because it was part of Call of Duty, and everyone played Call of Duty, so exposure was automatic. I, I saw the Zombies but, version of Advanced Warfare, and it actually looked quite fun, because they had, like, some RPG mechanics, and it looked deep enough to be interesting, not to mention Advanced Warfare and Infinite Warfare uh, actually look like halfway decent games if they weren't mainly multiplayer-focused. But ultimately... Mm -hmm. um, Activision does not allow Call of Duty to sell for lower than like fifty bucks ninety percent of the time. I would love huh. to play. That's how you know they were desperate like this that. year. Is during the Steam sale it was forty. Wow. Yeah, for the first time ever, the Steam sale during the year the Call of Duty was came out, it was already forty dollars. Wow. Wow. <laughs> 
people uh, have not responded positively this year. <laughs> huh. So, one thing I've always wondered, I mean, th- there are obviously a lot of co-op games that I'd like to partake in with you guys at some point, but mm-hmm. there are always the... Uh, the reason why I've I've looked at, into MMOs a lot is because there, there's typically a party max of like five or some, depending on what game you're uh-huh. playing. But it seems uh-huh. like most games have adhered to the two to four. Well, and... you can generally reliably get that many people. Yeah. Anything right. more than that, and it starts to become a problem. Oh, I know. But why not give the option? Because it's hard to balance the game around that. Like mm. Call of Duty Zombies. I, I mean, imagine Left 4 Dead with eight people, which is actually possible with a mod. Um, but it, the levels won't support that. Yeah, the levels don't support it, so I you don't have enough Wasn't guns, there a level where the two campaigns or... of characters intersected? And you could actually play a day player? Uh, in Guild Wars Maybe. 1, yes. No, in uh, in oh. Left 4 Dead. Oh, I think there was a DLC know. for the second game that brought in the characters from the first game into the same level as the characters from the I second game I don't remember seeing other players doing that, though. I, yeah. I've never heard of that. Yeah, I know, I, I know, I know, I know happened, what you're... I know the characters were there. I don't know if they were human yeah, controllable they or not. They were, they were at the top of a big bridge, and they're like... If you can turn this thing on, we'll lower it for you. And so you have to uh, run around getting gas canisters to power everything Alex like Hansen. usual. Yeah. Except for, um, I believe that's where, uh, like, canonically, Bill is supposed to die, which is supposed to be this, like, big thing. But I was like, Dude. I've never really cared about these characters. Why? Spoilers. B- Bill died for, canonically like, because the voice actor died. Yeah. So they're like, uh, well, we can't do anything new with him yeah, anymore. Really. So they, <laughs> yeah. So you encounter the uh, you encounter the party from the first game, but only three of them. Mm-hmm. And if you go into like a random building, you can find Bill's corpse. No. But the sacrifice actually- and cold stream DLCs. No mercy was ported into Left 4 Dead 2. Okay, so okay. yeah, I guess this campaign really did happen yep. in Left 4 Dead 2. I don't know yep. if you could play if it was like a multiple. It's not multiple if, parties. I, yeah, I, Left 4 Dead I played a lot it with of Spider. Bonus, a couple of bonus content. I, yeah. I I played that with uh, Spider and Pocket Pack. It was wow, those are four dollars right six now. Six would be an okay number. Yeah, for games. they're good. Six would I be mean, okay, but again, the thing is, um, you have to you have to design the game to work with one player, two player, three player, four player, five player, six player. Yeah, yeah. you either have to yeah. have it scale That's up hard. or yeah, yeah. A lot of one DLC to, two also to four, just. You can, it's pretty easy to bridge that, but more than that becomes very difficult to start uh, mm. covering that many, that big of a spread. There's also mm. just the roots of multiplayer, where like the original reason why games were four player were just because it's just a really four controllers. It's a really easy decision to make to say, <laughs> "Oh, this screen yeah. is a square. I will divide it into four smaller squares of the same dimensions." Right. Now yeah. it's a right. four player game, and then we just stuck with that number forever. And that's just become yep. part of our language of how we design games is to make base them around that number of players or one. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay, next question. Uh, what game after it was patched and or updated a lot did you go back to enjoy the, and enjoy the most? Oh, that's a really good question. Mm-hmm. Well, basically, um, like, what my favorite DLC or patch was. Hmm. We haven't gone back to it in a while, but our mellow has been really good about like our mellow was good. Yeah. Yeah, our mellow was great. Uh Space Food Truck definitely definitely like smoothed out its its uh game experience, even if it's still hell. Um yeah. I'm gonna flip through my Steam library because I have good answers for this one. I just can't remember any of them. My issue my is head. I don't replay games that much over long mm-hmm. periods of time. So, like, the only game I can think of that changed significant... I can think of two games that changed a ton over time, but I mm-hmm. like them less for the changes. Which like, are? I think that, I think uh, that Darkest yeah. Dungeon right now is worse than it was at launch, and I, I've i voiced my opinion of World of Warcraft mm-hmm. a lot over our series. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, uh, I replayed a lot of... Um... Uh, what was it? Elder Scrolls uh, Oblivion. Every new DLC, I pretty much picked that up and played, and I think that the DLCs that they added to that game, I mean, aside from horse armor, but are we counting <laughs> DLC as ones. updates then? Yeah, I think so. Well, then Ye- I have a really easy answer: Rock Band Three. <laughs> ah, yes. Well, yeah, it's a real good game when you have a thousand songs. <laughs> I think, unfortunately for me, most of the games Binding I've ever Isaac. played. Yeah, Binding of um, Isaac, I would definitely say is probably the number one example because. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, do we even count uh, Rebirth as like the the remake as a update? Because I probably would. Yeah, I would count that. Yeah. Yeah, that was that was amazing. What were we gonna say, Shell? Oh, I was just gonna say that unfortunately, most of the games I've ever played have never had updates per se. They are either uh, already uh-huh. in their finished state because they were, you know, older PC games, console games, and the like. Or they were mm-hmm. MMOs. So the only yeah. games that I've ever played that actually had updates were MMOs. And I'd have to say that, yeah, probably what Keith was saying, World of Warcraft, the n- new expansion brought in a lot of features that they should have had a long time ago. And it's nice to see that there. I was saying the opposite, which is that oh, the more times updates happened mm-hmm. to WoW, the, the worse the game got over time. Oh, no. really? Okay, I, never mind. I've been having a good time when we play Legion. Legion is enjoyable. Mm. and I, It's not the experience it used to be, but from like a person that doesn't want to commit to... and well, Legion from a definitely person, kind of feels like a return to form, but the uh, our last 100 or so episodes of, ga- of playing the game were unfortunate because... <laughs> they have this massive quantity of content that they kind of expect you to play through, but they've neutered it to be completely unfun and yeah, uninteresting. They and didn't. Yeah. They didn't simple. balance it. I I wish they had never actually gone back and rebalanced the base level. So if they kept, yeah. you know, every expansion pack the same, it's just the balance changes drastically between um one to the next. That actually would probably have been the most interesting because I remember getting my shit kicked in in like Westfall. Constantly in everywhere. Sucked. Yeah. <laughs> if you were finding liked... things that were your level, you actually had to pay attention and strategize like, to do things. Actually, you know, that would that'd actually be kind of a fun way of progressing it, too. Because, like, you get your shit kicked in in Westfall, but then by the end of it in Legion, your character is actually this, like, you know, super strong, well-geared badass that yep. can fight through things. That actually Whereas would as be of right now, really World of Warcraft one. is an experience where you just enter matchmaking over and over again to keep getting auto sorted into dungeons that you more or less button your mash way th- button mash your way through because running Good around in a God, questing is boring. Because wow. th- they have this, they have all of Azeroth, they have all of the Eastern Kingdoms, and all of Kalimdor, these massive, nostalgic, huge People areas that you them can explore they go forever. Yeah, yeah, if you do three quests in a zone, you basically already outlevel the zone. But there's still entire quest chains clearly intending you to play through their quest chains. And, like, there's tons and tons of content that you have, no one has well, any reason to ever experience. The, they, a lot of those, I'm sure it's just the years and years of content building up. Yeah. Like, it used to be, like, maybe the first time that that zone was made, there were, like, four quests in there. See, and you I, were would, to I would rather quests. than actually... Oh, no, they, at launch, the, each, each place was packed with quests. But yeah. The fact that the, 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 what happened is they kept scaling up leveling faster and faster. Uh, yeah, so mm-hmm. people can get and to the end game without spending a week yeah. to do it. Yeah. People want to raid. That's um, it. So they yeah. Well, I mean, it's kind of one level. of those where it would suck if you, like, pick up World of Warcraft and all of your friends are at the end game being like, oh, man, you know, talking about the dungeon of the raid that they just did uh-huh. with their, with everybody else. And That's it's going to take you literally a week worth of... Um, like, a week worth of gameplay. I think that I think that's how long it took to get to 70 back when I was... I was Which playing, is, like, it was this is really why I prefer them to let you just like make it easier to skip then, as opposed to uh-huh. making it what it is now, where they instead of making it more skippable for people that don't want to do it. They made it so that everyone gets the same version of the experience, which is that it, which is a version <laughs> that's objectively not well designed. Yeah, hmm. I, think- I would actually say I would like mm-hmm. it better if they did the Elder Scrolls Online method, which is everywhere is accessible. Everywhere is technically the same level. Some of the end game stuff is going to be too hard if you're not like uh, geared up. But technically, if you want to, you can try it. Good luck. Like I think I'd enjoy that more if it's just like you want to go back to Westfall and like do all the quests there and actually have like a benefit for doing so. Go for it. It's going to be hard, just like everywhere else. Guild Wars Two sort kind of, of had that. yeah. Guild Wars Two did it except for you couldn't go up in levels. You could just go back down, which would also be like a good way of doing it. But you could also still just like face roll your way through like earlier content for the most part. I was just liking how Legion's questing chains had a more cinematic feel to them and Yeah, that there's actually a storyline. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, a decade later suddenly the game has relatively frequent cutscenes with voice acting and animations and everything. It's it's almost bizarre when you when you encounter it for the first time. Because there's nothing about you uh, for that. Like it's like a full decade of playing a game where people statically walk around in an open world while text bubbles uh, pu- uh, pop up over their heads silently. If we want to count, um, just going back to the question that prompted all of this, uh, should we count things like Minecraft and Terraria? Where Terraria, like, Terraria, as you were, definitely. Yeah. 
In but fact, that, I actually that, really want to play the new update. Those were games that was like, a new update was basically coming out like every two weeks. Yes. Back when yeah. those were popular. So I don't know if you can really oh. say like you went back to them. It was just like, okay. it was on this treadmill of like, yes, new shit. Yes, new shit. Uh, here's really one fun, actually. But, Same yeah. vein as Terraria. Going back to, um... Starbound. Going back to Starbound after, mm -hmm. what, two years of development? Three years of development? That was an incredibly positive experience. They really made mm -hmm. that game good. Like, it's actually got a really good basis for a uh, sandbox gameplay. I think they just need needed to go deeper. Like, uh -huh. I spent literal hours just designing a crazy, like, uh, a crazy farm just so I could make, like, shit tons of money. Uh, uh -huh. and it was really enjoyable. Uh, and this is like coming off of Stardew Valley where I was just like, I've kind of hit the maximum on this game. Let's go play Starbound and Starbound's like, you can do crazy farming. And I'm like, yes. <laughs> it felt good. I liked it. They also turned that game around in like a good way that kind of offset all of those horrible reviews in the very beginning. Uh, next question for a while. Uh, Anonymous asks, what would be your perfect game? What would be your perfect game? Uh, the one I'm working on right now. <laughs> Confidence. <laughs> I mean, if you could somehow, like, game-wise mush No Man's Sky and Destiny together... What? That'd probably get kind of close. So you want an open-world Destiny? Uh, Destiny? Well, like, if you're, you know, like, imagine if uh, it was kind of like Destiny where you have, like, a lot of nodes that you can, like, go into and do, like, some very specific quests. But you can also just, like, go out and explore the world and there's just a ton of, like, shit to do. Because the problem I had with Destiny was there were, like, five locations that you could grind in. And they had, like, random events that would happen, which were kind of fun, but they got really repetitive. And I had, like, an app open that would even be like, here's where the next one's happening. So eventually I'm just like, I've just got this down to a really boring uh, process and it wasn't very enjoyable. Um, uh -huh. Whereas, like, if you could kind of, like, take that content approach, but make it, like, extremely expansive, so yeah, I can just go out and, like, find it, crack open a new planet that nobody's been to before. There's, like, a ton of aliens crawling over all over the place, maybe even, like, a, a small dungeon to raid uh, on my own with or with friends, and I finish that off, hop, pop in my ship and fly off to the next one. Maybe do some, like, trading or work on a base while I go on it. Like, that'd be really nice, and that would be way too much money for anybody ever to want to put uh, into development, so it's never gonna happen. At least not for the next, like, while. I think that uh, I mean it only it only sounds funny. a few steps away from being a Ubisoft game. Mm. If you ask like uh, young, like really young developers that question, like the answer is always um, like mixed genre things, but those never work out in practice. Oh, I know that I really would want something that incorporates, ah, mm -hmm. uh, like okay, so I really like Bioware's narrative take on mm -hmm. things but i would like a i mean me personally i would like something that's more colorful and slightly more lighthearted. not mm. that it would have to deviate from being you know serious and diary and you know there's very you know mature subject matter in this tale no i i just something that invokes a sense of awe and exploration mm -hmm. and stuff i would like there to be puzzles because I mean that's my huge thing you with just mist. Want mist. Okay, <laughs> I want I want a mist where you actually interact people with people the way that you did with Bioware, and that I mean maybe you can have could work. like MMO or co-op where you have like role play characters of various races or things that you can be, and then uh, like pet or like summons like Pokemon, except more customizable and cool and fantasy alien looking so that you just have like cool yeah. animal companions two thoughts yeah one uh i'm still waiting on my rts fps combo that people have been promising i know well like there was one years. uh savage resurrection awful. yeah savage it sucked <laughs> the, the the most recent one did kind of okay it's just the player base mm -hmm. is dead right from the get-go because mm -hmm. nobody wanted to get into it and yeah. No, like, substantive single player was enough to convince people to pick it up just on their own. Uh-huh. That is uh, that is one thing that indie developers do not do well. They're like... Combo they RTS, FPS. Well, yeah, obviously. I don't think obviously. it's doable. <laughs> uh, it, 
it's totally doable. It's just nobody nobody with a budget for it is going to do it. So it's not going to happen sure. for a long time. Yeah. Like uh, Warshift actually kind of gets there, but it's also a one man band type project. So mm-hmm. like, good luck actually uh, getting that fully developed. Because yeah. the other the other thought I had actually responding to what Shell was saying is uh, just kind of thinking about it. How come? How come most of like the really memorable, famous puzzle games take place in completely desolate worlds? I think Portal. It's... Nobody else was there. Mist. Nobody else was there. Abduction. Nobody else was there. <laughs> I think it's because it takes away from the mystery. If you had someone yeah. there that could explain things for you or uh, give you directions, then you wouldn't discover know. it for yourself. Puzzle Agent was pretty damn good, and that wasn't exactly desolate. I mean, it was Minnesota, but... <laughs> That's like... desolate. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, seriously, though, Puzzle Agent is actually probably one of my favorite puzzle games ever. That and, like, Professor Layton, they're good. I think it comes down to that if a character was explaining stuff to you, they'd be getting, they'd be giving you information that you wanted to get yourself, but if they're not doing anything, then they seem like idiots, well, because the puzzles aren't well, that Well, they don't hard, need to so be part of the puzzle. There? They can just be, like, I, around. I think there's a like, certain romance to it. Like, you know what a puzzle game is with a bunch of characters in it? An adventure game. I was yeah. gonna say, that's, at that <laughs> point, you're just playing, like, a King's Quest, or, like, Yeah, uh, or a Shard Light, or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's a I, good point, huh? I, yeah, I will say like a, mystery, a, mi- a mystery game. Interesting. I would like to point out there is kind of a certain romance to like figuring out what happened like a before place. a story. Yeah. Like practically every every game that starts post apocalyptic post apocalyptically, you have to kind of piece together how it happened. Very rarely is there just like a this is why it happened and now go deal or with even it. what the society was before. Yeah. yeah. Right. I suppose I would have to say that in the old Nancy Drew games, they did have static characters that you could talk and interact with. and Those are adventure games, though. Right. The line of questioning led you to new possibilities, or maybe they'd give yeah, you that's, something that you could Yeah, that's just use. adventure game. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that's the, that's the point. The problem with puzzle games with people is they just become adventure games because too quickly <laughs> is it easy like to... There's a world. Yeah. yeah it, it's too easy to start interacting with too many characters. And that's uh-huh. where it becomes a problem. And pretty huh. much immediately, the well, interacting with the characters becomes part of the puzzle. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Not, like, Primordia is a pretty good puzzle game, but it's totally yeah. an adventure game. Not unless most of the, like, puzzle aspect of the game took place in dungeons or places remote from society. Yeah. Because you could still have that in ancient ruins. Yep. Let's see. Well, I guess that answers that question. Yep. Good, good I- discussion. Next one. I never really answered it because I kind of don't have an answer. Wow. <laughs> Yours is just Dark just, Souls. It would have to be some game that yeah. is interesting and innovative and doesn't waste my time with recycled concepts or re- repetitive level design or anything. But I just want to be surprised. <laughs> so it's got to have like a cool thematic arc, but not you necessarily a narrative shit. arc. Tried and I I fell basically Dark Souls. <laughs> yeah, so Dark Souls crossed with like a good Telltale game. Hmm. No, because it doesn't have to have a story; it just has to have a thematic arc. <laughs> no, I'm just thinking of games that you've really enjoyed in the past. I don't yeah. like Telltale games, though. I complain about you, them. You used to <laughs> you used to be pretty down with some of them. I liked uh, Wolf Among Us. Walk, yeah, Walking Dead and Wolf Among Us, and that was where it started my interest, and then immediately stopped because they stopped making that kind of game. Also, yeah, they've, they've given up entirely and have made like. By the time was, you get to Michonne, it's just a movie. What was the Batman one? You're just watching one? a movie that they made I, for I've cheap by making it a game. I've heard they've started to like redeem the Batman one. Like episode three wasn't wasn't terrible. I mm-hmm. I don't have a ton of faith because they. Started with a five episode Minecraft series that expanded into an eight mi- episode Minecraft series, but each episode of the, it was like fifty minutes long, and it's like everything about that company just feels bad now. <laughs> Dark Souls with Legend of Zelda puzzles, yeah, I'd actually be pretty down with that. Oh, like, that'd be cool. Yeah, uh, Dark Souls with Legend of Zelda puzzles is the Crown of the Sunken King. Hmm. That's the one where you go through a temple that has, like, shoot well, the arrow into the dude, ceiling panel cool. to open a door or stuff like temples. that. So part of my problem with Dark temples. Souls with, like, puzzles, though, is, like, I agree with what you're saying. The problem is the combat kind of got in the way of the puzzles. So the puzzles were there, but it wasn't fun doing them because 
it felt like work just clearing the area around them so you could solve them and then you do it and it's like it, it's either it, it either ended up being trapped or uh not good actually you know when i was playing eso when they had the free trial that one weekend uh i actually hmm. in, i was going around a dungeon with my character and in that game yeah every every sentence that you choose like determines an outcome of the with the individual that you're talking with or has repercussions for some time later on. So it's interesting seeing how those go. Um, but I, I did enter the chamber of some dungeon and there were symbols on the wall of different like sun phases and moon phases. And I had to press buttons on a pillar in the right way. It was a simple puzzle, but I was yeah. like, oh yeah, there's a little puzzle. Like I, I, I like the idea of Dark Souls Legend of Zelda. I think it would just have to be less enemy enemy dense, but it keeps the quality of the like actual ca combat. I just want something colorful. I would love to play Dark Siders with you guys <laughs> if it was colorful. Dark Souls, yeah. <laughs> Sorry, Dark Souls. See, I love the aesthetic of Dark Siders. Yeah, that was done very well. Sort of. The initial part for Dark Siders sucks, yeah. but once you like, once you start getting into the the more interesting zones, it was cool. The moment you got out of New York City, which... Why the hell did they set it on Earth in the first place? That was the dumbest decision ever. Because they... Bird, I think you're hitting a, a mic thing. Someone's hitting a mic. Am I? Uh, I'm not Let me even... see. Yeah, it's you. It's you again. Nope. Uh, oh no. It sounds uh, like a plug is rotating in its socket or something. Yep. Uh, I think system. maybe my... Oh, my um my, my chair rolled over my, my microphone cable. Oh, no. So turning it, I guess. Sorry. I'm actually kind of surprised you like the aesthetic like of uh, Darksiders because a lot of it's really just gray. Well, um, I like Dark the Siders. flashes of color that yeah, they had. Also so, the modeling on the characters um, was well done. There, there was an area in Darksiders kind of midway through where you run into like the first effectively giant dwarves. And mm -hmm. that entire area was gorgeous. And then Darksiders 2 gets rid of the whole like earthy thing and actually had like a Fantasy really nice realm. vibe. Yeah. And I mean, the the angels were well done. I mean, the demons were interesting. Yeah, the too. only thing that sucked about Darksiders One was the environment design. Um, for like half of it, and the other half was actually surprising, surprisingly decent. Um, it's just the problem is you had to get through that first. Um, but that that game had like that game had like a really good style. I have both of the art books no i just have the the you second have, art book you have the second art yeah because the first one fell apart so i never want to wanted to buy like a book that would fall apart within a couple weeks i mean perhaps it was because Eesh. i grew up with banjo kazooie and legend of zelda ocarina of time and majora's mask but those were just colorful games speaking of uh colorful zelda likes i've been playing uh it'll do too very good i i've had a lot of fun playing that one though the bosses are kind of the wrong kind of hard um which is kind of a huge turn off because like one of them just spams missiles in every direction mm -hmm. and you have a dodge roll but you just dodge half the missiles and get ha hit by the other half and it's like why oh, even dodge no. at this point yeah it's kind of frustrating that feeling when it just doesn't feel like it was actually designed but just they just added attacks and movements until they thought they had an encounter and then left it at that yes yeah uh, the That's dodge rough. roll specifically the I think is the gate of memories approach to de <laughs> development the the dodge roll is the worst part of the game because you can only dodge roll through certain ranged attacks and you have to kind of figure that out the hard way and uh, -huh. uh it also has like one of those where you finish rolling and you got like a little bit of a lag time but you can also be hit in melee too with with it and it's just like I don't want to dodge roll unless I have to so I usually just like cheese it or you have a uh, a staff that if you fire it you reflect ranged attack so instead I sit there just mashing the staff button being like this is about as effective but sometimes I hit the boss too so it's probably the better choice um, but like the actual puzzles are pretty good and I've spent like 20 minutes being like how the fuck do I slide these ice blocks around mainly because I suck at those but I I, I like that I don't know What's it's kind just... of astonishing to me is I'm looking at Dark Starters War Mastered on my PS4 right now, and mm. it's f it's 40 gigabytes. Yes. Wow. How? They... How uh, is the remaster of an Xbox 360 game that big? What they, did they do? I mean, they downscaled all their textures and compressed yeah. them, and yeah, then it's... the remaster is just they ship with the 4K textures. Yep. I always no, wonder boom. sometimes, though, if it, if, it, if sometimes the digital distribution and, and big disc sizes and stuff allows people to just not care about yes. size and just be yeah. like, eh, pfft, 
Like, well, it's not because sometimes yeah, I think it might not even oh, affect if it's fidelity, but necessarily, but just be like, eh, we don't have to work to make it smaller. I, so I'm still hey. cranky at uh, <laughs> EA uh, for doing that with Titanfall, where it's just like, mm. eh, people have enough hard drive space to buy uh, to, or what, to install or what this. Ubisoft did with uh, because everybody it, does that division, though, so nobody has hard drive space. Yeah, anymore. I know. Like, I when have every a, game is 50 gigs. There's I no have, hard drive space anymore. I actually have three uh, external hard drives plugged into my computer now. One for video, uh, two for videos, which I mean is my own my own business. I have one dedicated specifically to my Steam library, just so I can have every game installed, and uh-huh. so I don't have to like install uh, uninstall things randomly. Uh, I want to say the say, games like Halo Five it. and Division are bigger than GTA Five now in size. <sighs> <laughs> and I remember when you used to have a game cartridge in your game was just saved on that. Uh, yeah, that, all those batteries, the batteries are going dead and you can't save anymore. Yeah, yeah, I don't miss the cartridge days. They were interesting, but they're not worth missing. I think missing. the cool thing about the cartridge was that you could, um, I mean, for one, the console turned into a solid state device, which to me as a nerd is like really cool. But that's not even <laughs> there. Uh, the thing I thought that was cool about cartridges was that they could sh- uh, ship with your own hardware on the cartridges and like upgrade the system mm. basically for your game. Yeah, I remember what they did on the having... SNES a couple of times. I remember I had to get the special like graphics pack for Donkey Kong sixty four. Yep, I th- like was it a graphics memory. pack? Yeah, yeah, it memory. was just extra RAM. Yeah, you had to stick yeah. it into the back of your Nintendo sixty four controller. So. Yep. I had to I had to get that because I rented Donkey Kong 64 and I wanted to play it because <laughs> I heard it was good and I think one of my friends was playing it in front of me and I was like this looks cool and so I picked it, it was up cool. I picked it up from Blockbuster I but like I couldn't play games. it because I didn't have the pack you needed the the 4K extra and RAM yeah at the time this is well before I had a GameStop in the area or at least knew of one I I mean maybe there was uh-huh. but my parents were never going to tell me because we'd only go to places if they're within walking distance so pretty much my entire like early game library was purely from the occasional Amazon order and mm-hmm. uh, Blockbuster. So we go back to Blockbuster and I'm like, so we need this thing. And so they sell me a rumble pack. Oh, oh no. I was, that was, uh, that was oh. the day where I was just like, fuck Blockbuster. <laughs> and then I didn't buy like a single game for, for like, um, I didn't buy a single game for like two years. And then I moved to Nor- uh, North Carolina and it was a uh it was a there was a GameStop in the local mall I could walk down to and pick up like Final Fantasy VIII for nine bucks. And I did, and it was awesome, except for their disc three was like irredeemably scratched. Aww. Which sucked, but oh, I mean that was kind man. of the point where I'd already lost steam on the game, so it was I like think, I don't whatever. think anybody really misses the days of physical media. Oh, I I'm so glad <laughs> digital downloads. The yeah. only game that uh I'd ever gotten from Blockbuster was the uh, special Blockbuster exclusive uh, Beast Wars Transmetals fighting game. Uh, that's It was funny. They actually had all the original voice actors for it, too. I re-rented so many well, games when I was young. Shall we <laughs> start to wrap it up? We've been going for nearly sure. two hours now. Yeah, I think the last we, uh, one last so thing is up? that related uh, to yeah. the... Uh, because we've just been talking about old video games, one last question is Anonymous asks, what's your most nostalgic game you eventually... Came back to and just hated. Ooh, just hated. one that I hated. Oh, I'm, um, I mostly asked it because um, I already had an answer in mind, which is okay. Uh, okay. As a kid with my brother, I played uh, Star Wars Jedi Power Battles like daily, <laughs> and I want. Then at one day at a thrift store, I acquired a physical copy of it, and I'm like, I'm gonna play this on my PS3, and we're gonna try out Jedi Power Battles. And it's completely unredeemably Wait, unplayable. Was that the PS1 game that I thought saw you streaming like a while back? Yeah, it's a two-player mm. co-op, uh, like basically a 3D brawler, where you play as Jedi and you just whack people. and You run around the story of Phantom Menace, basically hit people with lightsabers, and you can like block at the last second to deflect uh, lasers oh. back at their targets and stuff like that. Mm. But like the controls are unredeemable. The visuals are the worst of PlayStation 1 jank where everyone has their textures flickering on their polygons and, and like mm-hmm. nothing looks like it's fitting together by more than, any more than paper mache. And uh, it just... The level design's awful, the boss design's awful, playing it feels terrible, and there's a lot of like... Despite being a relatively easy uh, brawler, it'll randomly throw you, you into these really, really difficult mm-hmm. and tight platforming segments where you die instantly if you mess up. And, like, it's just, yeah. it's so I not have, worth trying to play now. 
I have two answers to that question. Um, uh, both of the both of these games are from when I was like really like maybe like five or six years old. The first one, uh, Bubsy, Bubsy the Bobcat uh, on the <laughs> uh, Sega Genesis, I think. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, on the Sega Genesis. Not even Bubsy um, 3D. No, no, no. Uh, but the original one sucked too. It was like a weird Sonic ripoff. With really it was bad, like a bad Sonic ripoff because you it was couldn't even bad. like go fast. It was just like it had falling damage. Yeah. You would oh, I remember that. Fell. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've seen a video of that where there was like an issue where like the screen real estate was way too close to your character, so you like yeah, yes, you would just run into yeah. hazards basically. Uh, yeah, yes. you, you you basically had like four screen uh, like character widths on either side of you for the screen. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the other the other answer is uh, another Sega Genesis title uh, called Chuck Rock, which I loved a lot as a kid. Um, what a name! Uh, it was about a caveman who uh, his only attack was picking up rocks and throwing them at dinosaurs. <laughs> no, and it was insanely hard. I played it as an adult, and it was really bad. And I got to, like, the first boss and died, and then just said, I'm done. <laughs> and it took me, like, 45 minutes to get to that point in the first level. Oh, no. Bad, bad, bad. It was one of those games, and of course, these are coming back from the days where, like, if you if you uh, died or lost the game, that was it. You had to start from the very beginning. Mm. There was no checkpoint system. There were no save games or anything like that. You just had to go... Actually, glad that's back, gone. Ooh. Thinking back to what you said about the cartridges and the saves, I wonder if uh, some failure occurred with our Glover Nintendo 64 game. Probably. I, potentially. <laughs> uh, because. I mean, you just open it up and put in a new watch battery. Oh, okay. It's good I'll as new. into that. Because yep. I think my brother lost all his save data. And I, I would have to say that of all the games that I. I, I really played hours of it, trying my best to get done with it. And I mean, I'm, I am i haven't played it recently, but I'm pretty sure if I went back, I would still hate it. But I'd have to say it was Glover. Uh, yeah, Glover. Uh, Not age well. Huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's a reasonably popular game, but like in retrospect, it's a despised game. Oh, I know. And I mean, there was so much that could go wrong. Your ball was your lifeline, and if it got mm -hmm. damaged, it would have, you know, the little bandages on it. But if it rolled off into nowhere's land, Glover would just go, Wah! like, point, at, point at, the, at the ball as it, you know, careens over the end. And you're just like, no, why? And I the boss battles were unforgiving, and it was hard to navigate the whole the levels because you had to constantly bounce up the ball with you, throw the ball. Sometimes the ball would arc the wrong way. Ah, Glover! Ugh, I never got past the, like, third stage. And there were, what, six? Eight? I forget how many there were. There were, like, all these themed worlds never got far enough. For me, I love that if you twist. Google... If you Google Glover game and image search, one of the, first, one of the top results, like, only a page down, is, a. Uh, Danny from Game Grumps just holding like eight copies of it. Oh, that, I, I <laughs> oh yeah, that picture. Yeah, it's really like, funny. I, I feel like part of the reason why people even remember that game is because it was such an available game. Like yes. there was yeah. just so many copies made that it's just everywhere. So it has <laughs> outlived by force of will many other games that are harder to get. <laughs> I just like remember that, that one, being one that of the one first cube we had. Puzzle game on PlayStation One was probably really neat, but no one will ever find a copy of it ever again. So who knows? <laughs> But Glover, man, that's everywhere. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, Wander, did you have one? Shall we? Chameleon, no. Chameleon Twist. As a kid, it was wonderful. As an adult, it's like, I can't tell where anything is. These textures are terrible. This level design is atrocious, and these controls are horrifying. Oh, God, I recognize this game. I have the most, no idea the most what amusing this thing is. about Chameleon Twist <laughs> is that uh, the first game was a weird, like, ball person, and the second uh -huh. game, the, for the thrilling sequel, they suddenly thought, what if we made the main character look like a chameleon? <laughs> 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 it took the second game to realize that. The first one's just a weird ball person that has a long tongue, and they're both 64 yep. games. Yep. <laughs> and as a kid, I thought they were amazing. The first level was like this w weird clown nightmare. 
with like a rabbit and shit. And it was kind of okay. The second was amuse- an amusement park and it gave me nightmares. And my dad decided to do a D&D campaign based on that. And I was Wait. so angry about that. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> what did he do for the campaign? It was dumb. We were fighting like anthropomorphic popcorn <laughs> buckets. It was stupid. <laughs> <laughs> That was the last time I ever let my dad DM a campaign because <laughs> at this point I was in like sixth grade and like I had been playing Too Chameleon old. Twists yeah. like three I feel like years we're prior. Into wander therapy. <laughs> yeah, really. It's like what I, is your I've been playing it like three years trauma. prior, and I think my dad hadn't quite come to grips he with the fact like that I was popcorn growing either. up. I don't like eating popcorn. Oh yeah, I hate popcorn. It's uh-huh. disgusting. Caramel corn is perfect, but you know, it's popcorn. <laughs> but. um... <laughs> But yeah, so my dad, I think, was trying to, like, make it all, like, kidsy and stuff. But, like, at that point, I was already kind of on my way to adolescence. So it's just Tween like, age-hood. no, don't Dang. do this, dad. And he's like, what? You don't like anthropomorphic popcorn? I'm like, no. And he's like, well, oh, well. And then we kept doing it. And eventually, <laughs> I was just like, I'm going to go play Game Boy. And you I did. Like popcorn? More popcorn. It, that's what it was. And it was really annoying. <laughs> uh... And then you move to the middle of the country uh, to escape the popcorn. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> nah. <laughs> Shall we close this out by listening to Ono oh Necromancer one more time? Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> Whether we do or not, they will, because I'm putting it in. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> all right, so I just hit the play button. Uh, just oh, as a reminder, right. seeing as we usually forget... Uh, Send us questions, more questions. Yeah, this entire podcast was made out of your questions, and yeah, you... It was, was fun. A, I really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah I liked it, especially. too. Yeah, questions uh, are good because everyone can talk about questions, whereas only certain people have played or <laughs> certain games or watched certain movies. Yeah, yeah. I do like being uh, modern, so maybe if we do it like every other time just to collect questions or just well, do it freeform, I don't know, whatever. It's probably best to split each podcast between both, like open yeah. with talking about some games, then go to questions. But that we have a lot like of a questions. <laughs> yeah, we did. And so that's, that's you go to four dot com slash ask. Yep. That may not be the long term question in the repository, but it was something that was easy to set up and it works. It's worth so far. Because all these questions are coming in. <laughs> and yep. there will be a link in the description below, assuming Keith doesn't yeah. forget that. If you and... don't if you don't have a Tumblr account, you just ask it anonymously by default, but you you can type a name in the question itself if you for some reason want us to say who asked the question. Yep, that's always an option. That's, that's what, about the only that's way you'll get Teddy your name did. on any of our on our any of our videos. Yeah. <laughs> that's the closest thing. This is the only way to get a shout out. It's ever, a shout out <laughs> because we hate shout outs. Is that you can ask a question that we actually ask, and I'm not asking all of them. There are some garbage ass questions in here. That's not to say that <laughs> now if I haven't asked no, a question, that does Keith, not mean that it was Keith, skipping it intentionally. But some of them have been skipped intentionally. <laughs> Keith, I think you should collect all the garbage ones for one day. I there think are we still more a, of them in here. Oh, I yeah, think we, we should, should do, do a, a trash day. round. Oh, yeah, yeah trash <laughs> round would be great. So I should stop deleting them then. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Collect them all, just sort them by good shit, oh. boring shit, and amazing garbage. There's some really dumb ones. <laughs> yeah, those are the ones we want. <laughs> oh, man. All right, well, see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Yep. Oh no, necromancer. Oh no, necromancer. Basically, necromancer.